This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Hello and welcome to the iRacing Esports Network and the Acuta AOSC Super Series presented by Apex Racing TV. My name is Sam Fitzpatrick and alongside me for this evening's racing is Daniel Leet with Scott Newton on the cameras. And Daniel, we're at a familiar circuit. We've come accustomed to this track in recent weeks. A lot of uh, different series visiting this place uh, in, uh, in recent weeks with the 24 hours, of course. However, this place never gets old. It's a proper slipstream fest, and we got a four-hour race round Daytona for your viewers to indulge your eyes and stuff. Yeah, good evening, Sam, and all the viewers tuning in. Great to have you on board. And yeah, look, mate, I love Daytona. I know we've spoke about it in a couple of other series. It's a, a great, fun track that I really enjoy. One that, while simple in its certain in its look, certainly provides a lot of danger and a few little critical points around this track where these guys are going to be really, really really key in getting the braking markers right and trying to go for those passes but the thing you touched on with the slipstream is going to be absolutely critical and the the big risk for reward thing is here is how much do you, you take out of the rear of the car as far as wings concerned to try and get that benefit versus how much do you maintain the stability of the car in through the braking zones definitely it's going to be a really tricky uh balance for the drivers we'll uh talk about that a little bit later on first up we'll of course we'll give a big a uh, shout out to all the sponsors of the series which make this broadcast and this championship happen. Uh, Akita Solutions, of course, the title sponsor, uh, providing rigging hardware and safety equipment. Next Level Racing, uh, working on racing and flight cockpits and uh, will be uh, providing direct drive 
base to a driver this season. Abritsu Racework providing custom sim and real racing gear, Motum simulations, we have VR uh, simulators uh, all around Australia, Night Rider Designs creating personal liveries for drivers and teams, Wolf Graphics providing personalized stickers and signs, Sam Black look media uh, of course doing the race highlight photos throughout this season and of course race management service uh, doing all the stewarding today or certainly helping out with that and all these sessions as well of course we're currently in a 30 minute qualifying session about five minutes to go in that qualifying session and then of course we'll have a four hour race 113 laps 650 kilometers whichever way you look at it it's going to be a long one um, Daniel, more, more on that, uh, actually, uh, um, slipstream or, or that uh, rear wing balance, because that is going to be such an important element, because whilst you can run a little bit more wing with your race craft, that's really going to cost you, and of course, around a track like this, if you're in a big train, you want to have the best race craft possible, you don't want to fall to the back, and you want to be able to uh, kind of controlling your own fate. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, we've seen what Daytona offers up as far as racing concerned around the oval. It, it does require a lot of strip stream, slipstream benefit out of these cars. And while we use the majority of the, the oval here, um, the key parts is obviously getting the car down into turn one. You, while you're going to have a huge draft and uh, we're going to see a lot of two and three wide action going around the oval here, you need to be able to pull those cars up. And by taking too much wing out of that back end, it's really going to move around a lot. There's only really one line in these cars to get in through turn one. Obviously, we'll see a lot of cars getting down the inside making a pass. But if you can't pull it up properly or, or you've got that little bit of a wiggle in the back, it's going to make it really hard. Now, the guys do have a little bit of uh, play with the roll bars to try and help even that out. But getting that all-important balance is going to be absolutely key. Absolutely. In the championship, it's been a... Very good start to the championship for James Scott in particular. 660 points. It's a perfect score for him so far. He's going for three out of three. And of course, he won the last two rounds of last season as well. He is the man to beat for Evolution Racing Team. Uh, his teammate, Carl Stokes, uh, currently in second place in the championship. And then we fall a little bit further back to James uh, McKee. Then it's Thomas Hines and Brett Loxton rounding out the top five. Then it's Danny Davidson, Harley Haber. Jordan Ross, Marlon McCullough, of course, the defending champion, struggling a little bit at the moment, is Marlon and Cooper Webster, uh, who had uh, a pretty good uh, round one, however, uh, just uh, down in 10th place at the moment. It's got a long way to go. Uh, only the third round of the championship. This the second endurance meeting of the season. And of course, anyone who isn't aware, driver pairs today are teaming up and uh, they can sc will score the same amount of points depending on where they finish. They get a couple of fast repairs as well, which could be pretty important because especially around this uh, bus stop section, very easy to make a mistake. The walls are pretty close around this place, Daniel. And uh, yeah, it's uh, with that low rear wing, it can be quite easy to uh, have an incident or two. Yeah, definitely. It'd be really easy. I mean, we're already seeing the advantage of some of these guys with the, the, the setups already running in the car and just how close these fields are. If we look at uh, the guys in the top four positions, there's only a tenth of a second covering them at the moment. You can see it up on screen. We've got um, Shoot Racing going out for a lap there, but current pole, uh, James Mackey put a fantastic lap in in the 142.7. James Scott, uh, who we've seen take out the last two events, uh, currently sitting in second place, only three hundredths of a second behind. And then Jordan Ross uh, bringing up third position. Uh, and that's the, the top three from Spa basically sitting there in the, in the championship. I think the big one and the dark horse probably out there tonight is going to be the likes of Harley Haber and Harley Haber, sorry, and Forza El Nabi. We know they struggled a little bit at Spa, but they get a little bit of redemption here tonight at Daytona. And I'm looking for that car to be well up towards the pointy end of the field. Yeah, they led at one point, I think, in Daytona, and it was a legit lead as well. I think a mistake maybe from uh, Evolution Racing Team 88, who ended up winning that race. And uh, yeah, Haber was leading at one point, but uh, pretty much everything conspired against them. Ended up in about 15th place, which did not do justice to their pace. You're absolutely right, though. They could be on for a bit of a comeback on this one. But a very different endurance race to the one we had at Spa. Much more slipstream effect, of course Spa has a decent slipstream effect, but this place we expect big trains of cars, a lot of fuel saving, and of course some pace cars as well. Everything lining up perfectly. Uh, should be a, an incredible race. Hopefully you'll stick with us uh, throughout it. 
uh, because it really could come, come down to the last couple of minutes, especially with how tight the field is. So currently Pursuit Sim Racing with just 30 seconds to go in qualifying, leading the way, the 777 car, uh, 088 Evolution Racing Team in second place, and it's Evolution Racing Team 143 and Mac 1 Esports Pink, of course, with Haber. I'll be doing that at one at the moment. Middle Finger Racing moves up into 20th place. That's a, a 10 places gained. It's only about half a second improvement, but, uh, well, I guess half a second is pretty big, but that is a uh, just shows how close the order is. Only uh, about one and a half seconds off pole position still, uh, Middle Finger Racing, even l less than that and still down in 20th position. However, they'll be quite pleased with that. Harley Haber, can he surge to the top of the standings? Currently in fourth place, and it's not an improvement. A couple of tenths slower. You would have probably known that. There's no whole lot you can do for the last 30 seconds around this place. Just a flat out sprint. The NASCAR three and four, and uh, they'll be starting, well, they'll be hoping in fourth place, the 21 car. Because qualifying not the most important, especially in these insurance races, but still some pride on the line. Here is Jamie McKnight for Evolution Racing Team. They were pretty strong at uh, at Spa, I think. Um, I think uh, Daniel, but yeah, they were just kind of consistent in that top ten, and well, once again, they're in that similar position in qualifying. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they finished uh, eighth position at Spa, uh, which was a really good showing for those guys. Jamie had a little bit of um, some unfortunate issues last time out at Brent's Hatch, which put him well down um, after electing to start from the pit lane. So he'll be looking to come back through the field. Adam Briggs for DPR Racing, currently sitting down in the 16th spot for that car, uh, putting in a pretty good time at the moment. They didn't quite improve on their lap one second off the pace but uh looks like we're starting to close down with the only half a dozen cars still out on track john latham still going faster it seems 44.0 that last time round and this time uh it is a lot slower 1.4 seconds slower maybe just trying to get some a uh, little bit more practice before this race starts by the way of course the uh, in some time always quite important uh it's eight uh sorry four minutes past eight in the evening so believe it or not it will get dark um in case i needed to explain that but uh yeah it should be uh quite a unique challenge for the drivers the headlights on iRacing over the last year or so have got a lot better the drivers will be very thankful for that and we've got a lot of floodlights Usually in uh, real life, they've come up with some fancy stats about uh, the amount of energy which is used. I'm not sure how much energy is used, but I'm sure it's a lot because this place is properly lit up. There's a NASCAR running around this place uh, during the nights, I believe, in the past. Uh, Kane Houston, I believe this isn't a lap and he's going to run out of time anyway. So, uh, this point for him. Apparently, uh, standing starts for today, which will be tricky for the drivers on this banked grid. Just a word on that, Daniel. That's going to be uh, quite a challenge. Often you just see rolling starts for normal standing start series, but they're sticking with it here, and I'm hoping that the drivers have got a bit of experience. Yeah, I think it's going to present a, uh, a really unique challenge. Obviously, the cars are going to line up with a bit of a bank uh, around the oval, and getting them off uh, off the line well is going to be key. The guys will use a lot of line locker to do that, but the minute you let on the power, it's going to want to step to the, down towards the middle of the track. So trying to keep that car moving in a straight direction is going to be key. And I mean, potential, we could see a few few issues here. Hopefully, uh, these guys have done plenty of practice throughout the course of the week, which will negate that, but uh, there's always the possibility if, if things do go astray. Absolutely. So here we are then for the grid for round three of the championship, the second endurance round of the championship. Pursuit Sim Racing 1 on pole position, a couple of hundredths of a second ahead of the Evolution Racing Team 088 going for three out of three. Evolution Racing Team 143 line up just behind there, it's Mac 1 Esports Pink. Pursuit Sim Racing 2 line up in fifth, there's EXG Motorsports Red. Evolution Racing Team 26, uh, Pursuit Sim Racing 3. Mac 1 Esports Yellow, Evolution Racing Team 027, Premier Racing Team, uh, Mac 1 Esports Green, uh, GRM Enduro 1, KRF the Gyro Seat, and Zuba Racing 209. The rest of the field will go through for you now. 42 drivers we are hoping to take the grid. EXG Motorsports White did not set a qualifying time, so we, uh, we hope that uh, they will be able to take the grid at least. Watch out for these first couple of corners. Could be very tricky for these drivers to negotiate. It was very tight turn one. 
a lot of uh, off camber as well on the outside of the corner and then of course the couple of horseshoes easy for some drivers to go in too deep perhaps cause a fit of contact we'll be hoping that the drivers get through nice and cleanly if there is such a big issue we will see a safety car of course but it's michael taliancic taking the car for this third round of the championship can pursuit sim racing one get their first race win of the season you're about to get four hours of racing underway at daytona and away we go, awful start for one, the drive straight away, it's falls on El Nabi for Mac one Esports, that's a very disappointing start for them, but Michael Taliancic being able to keep the lead going into turn one, James Scott in second place, Carl Stokes remaining in third, and uh, yeah, it's a really poor start for Mac one Esports, Pink uh, dropping down four places into eighth place already, good start for Jamie and Donson in the 033 car, a GRM in Chure as having to get defensive is the triple seven car, just trying to hang on to that lead while the, while the tires are cold, Perhaps coming under a little bit of pressure is James Scott, but managing to hang on. Also, good start for the 092 car KRF, the driver's seat up three places. And also, good start for the 66 car as well. Uh, but uh, on the most part, most drivers have got through quite cleanly. It's been a really good start for, for people, everyone involved. No issues. There are two cars just lagging a little bit further down the back. I think that's the cars of uh, Michael Whiting and we've got there Dave Miller as well unfortunately for those guys well down the field after a little bit of contact but they should be able to regroup and catch up a little bit in the mid pack though Matthew Deer getting involved in a little bit of a battle here um, he's got a couple of cars just ahead of him so a couple of the middle finger cars there trying to work his way through but this is where we'll start to see the benefits of that draft Jabe Stewart and uh, Stephen Vargas seemingly getting involved in a bit of a issue the um, 868 uh, car and uh, yes, a really poor start for Mac one Esports. Oh, there's more contact here. And well, they get through. And now there's going to be three wide as well on the exit. Got to be very careful. More contact almost being shoved into the wall. And more three wide as well. Didn't want to see this on the first half of the race. But they just about got through. I think that was Chris Pellet there. Really getting shoved out in the Pulse Racing Team blue car. And he was very fortunate not to end up in the wall. Now we've got three wide once again. Trying to get involved is, uh, is the pink car just behind. But uh, the track completely blocked as we start the second lap of the race of 113. When you guess that, we've got 111 laps to go as we've got another driver across the circuit. And they just about managed to slow down before turn one. Maybe have collected another car. In fact, Greg Sharp, I think, may have been involved in that one. And uh, also Marty Hansen. So already some issues for drivers. And... Uh, yeah, just some avoidable instance, it seems. Everyone getting quite aggressive in this first lap. Yeah, really uh, good to see that we haven't had too bad a, a start from everyone. That little bit of a, a run into turn one, that was part of what we were saying just on the pre-race there with the, the wing angles could become quite tricky later on. Brian Borg sitting here at the moment down in the ninth position, so having a pretty solid run. We'll look for that car to come well up the, the order towards the back end of the race. We know they were very, very quick out at Spa and uh, had a really strong middle stint in there. As you can see, the light's starting to come up right behind them. It's the GRM Enduro's car as well. Uh, not too far behind, a couple of tenths of a second, but um, they will slowly close down that gap. And then up and down this entire field, we are going to have a multitude of two-car uh, trains going around. So really quite a lot of movement so far. I'm not sure if we can get the uh, kind of the position changes. But uh, plenty of kind of threes and twos and fours out there. Not too many fours, to be fair. There's a few sixes there. I mean, Sean Thompson, uh, probably the best start out of the uh, front runners up into eighth position already. Side by side for fourth position. As the top three all battle one another. David Kimmon uh, for Pursuit Sim Racing 2 going side by side at the moment with uh, uh, Corey Preston. And Preston might be able to move ahead here. I think he'll have the inside line for the next corner. And he does move ahead. So uh, nicely done there. As I think uh, Kimmon's going to lose another position here and gets very sideways. And that's a poor couple of corners for him. He's going to drop to the back of this train potentially if he can't hold off um, Brian Borg. And uh, yeah, that's a bit disappointing for, uh, for David Kimmon. Just got to regroup now and make sure that he stays in the tight. Yeah, a couple of those cars getting past the uh, car there, the Mark 1 car, Forza and Arby getting through 
Ryan Stewart, Sean Thompson. You can just see the back of that car just ahead of us. So uh, Forzen starting to get regrouped now after that slightly poor start from him. He's back up in the fifth position and should be able to start making uh, a bit of a move forward. But really surprised to see just on the exit back up onto uh, NASCAR 2 there, uh, just how much of a gap uh, Ryan Stewart, uh, sorry, Ryan O'Sullivan and um, Sean Thompson were able to, to gap over David Kidman on the exit there. So uh, those cars working very, very well off the line. It's going to be one of the key parts in those slower corners, getting the move out. And probably the big thing you've got to watch on six and, and for all the guys that did the 24 and have done multiple laps around there, you know you've got that big bump on the inside that you've got to get those cars to work over. So uh, working well there. Sean Thompson there with a little bit of a lose mid-corner through the bus stop, which does drop him back into the clutches there at David Kidman. And David should get a nice run here under the draft. The top six all in a queue. Good lap that from Corey Preston. Soon they had to actually make an overtake. He still managed to catch up to the top three, which perhaps suggests that Talianchich isn't the fastest as he's spun round as Talianchich. It's an awful first corner and he's stuck in the middle of the circuit. What, how are the others just going to react? They haven't reacted well and Talianchich is hit and has blown his engine. Can he possibly get that car back to the pits? There will be some life in it and he will be able to get a faster pair, but that is a big moment in this race for the race leader. It seemed like it was a, 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 a single mistake. It wasn't. It was James Scott going into him, a mega unlucky for Talianchich. That was third place as well. Maybe uh, Ryan O'Sullivan, I'm not quite sure. Maybe Forzan El Nabi, in fact, who also got involved, and there was uh, stuff going on later on, but that is big disappointment straight away for uh, Tali Ancic, who I believe is still trying to pull that car back to the pits. Yeah, I'll be uh, bitterly disappointed with that. Now, for, for the guys that missed the run at Spires, you can see a little bit more of that replay going on. These drivers do get the two quick repairs out there tonight, so a uh, couple of opportunities for them to come back. They will fall a long way down as a result of that within the order, so they'll be really banking on those safety cars later on to help them get back up towards the front. But uh, as it stands right now, Kyle Stokes, a big beneficiary of that. He has extended his lead uh, to just over a second for Forza El Narby. James Scott as we focus on right now, right behind that, Ryan O'Sullivan. So the ERT cars taking the top four positions, one of the pink one, uh, the Mark 1 pink esports for with Forza behind the wheel up there as long, well as Corey Preston for EXG Motorsport. So really good spread of cars, but uh, ERT really getting up towards the pointy end. So Stokes had to go off the circuit, I think, at uh, turn two as well, but still managing to uh, hold on to the lead as uh, Ross Thalon. Oh, apologies, that was a uh, tow back to the pits. And uh, Thalon actually uh, pulling out now. Uh, so, yeah, not sure if there's going to be any changes then for uh, Talianchich, but uh, they've got back to the pits potentially, perhaps uh, with a tow. Uh, so we go a little bit further back, big trains. Jamie Stovold um, in this battle, trying to get past Stephen Varga, who's uh, actually already managed to make up back some places as Varga after an incident on the opening lap with Joe Stewart. Uh, back up into 13th place. As they all try to not make contact with one another into the second horseshoe. It's so easy to uh, just take a different line to your rival and pay a little bit more speed in and cause a very innocent contact. So we're very much in the middle of this. But once you get onto this part of the circuit, very much just dependent on how far behind you are of the next driver. And that's bad news for Stovall because whilst he is very close to the driver in front of him, uh, the driver in front of him is very close to the driver in front of that. So I thought he's going to be able to make too much of an impression. It's, uh, of course, Andrew Dyson leading this train at the moment. Jacob Knight also moving up into seventh place. Brilliant start so far for the uh, Chipple 4 car of EXG Motorsports Black. Good start for both the EXG uh, dri uh, teams, I believe. And uh, they are already up into seventh place, I think, from 17th on the grid. Yeah, doing um, a really good job there, moving the, both those cars up towards the front. Uh, one thing we did just see as well, just to compound Telly uh issues earlier on with that crash, they've also got to serve a drive-through penalty for some contact at uh, lap one as well. So that's uh, only going to hurt them even more. So we'll keep an eye on how that unfolds for them. I haven't seen that car come down into the lane yet, however. So. Um, not sure where they are on circuit at the moment. We've got a very slow car in the middle of NASCAR 4. Uh, 
going around there, but uh, some guys struggling a little bit on the run into one. As you can see in the background there, Borg, Stovold, uh, still fighting on for those positions in the, uh, just outside the top 10. Side by side into the kink. You'd expect one of them to give way, and just about to. So uh, Stovold stays ahead and now actually under pressure uh, is, uh, is the driver who he uh, just overtook all contact and a driver stuck in the middle of the circuit that's damien johnson the 033 car for grm enduro running as high as eighth place previously but like i said on uh, the last lap very easy to make an innocent mistake down into that horseshoe and he's just been given a tap for out and stuck in the middle of the circuit not like taliantri so it seems to have got away with just a little bit of damage and will be able to continue on his way uh, but that's a shame for a team who uh, had a pretty good start. We're already up five places. Just trying to see uh, where they're fallen to now. But they uh, yeah, must be outside the uh, top 25, I imagine. Yeah, well down the order at the moment. Currently showing them down in 33rd position. So they're a long way off the pace and still yet to come through the lane for that drive through. Uh, the top five really starting to get a good gap now. Uh, over the rest of the field, so they're Ooh. going a long way through. Actually, early stop too, Forza on Arby uh, coming in, so he's getting a stop done. We've also got Brian Ball uh, coming down as well, so if you guys may be starting to play a little bit of a different strategy card here and get themselves out of a bit of a battle, Jacob Knight coming under all kinds of pressure. He's got the uh, 27 ERT car right behind him, so uh, that's a big move down into one, able to pull both of those cars up, which is what they need. Stovall casually just gaining loads of places. Apologies if uh, maybe we haven't commented on too much, but he, he doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot necessarily as a Stovall. Yeah, he's gained about five places just in the last couple of laps, so it's uh, making some really good progress. The uh, 919 car, and he is now into uh, ninth position ahead of Job Stewart who's also making really good progress was running in the top 10 of course early run before some contact sent him down the field and Stewart born as well uh, just uh, in 11th place behind them but Bowden's well with a good start of course uh, so, so much fighting at the moment but we just have a safety car it could turn this race completely on its head and that's certainly what uh, the 777 car and in a 36th position at the moment, I will be hoping for. But uh, yeah, plenty uh, more to go across a couple of uh, pace cars, likely plus any that we need for uh, incident collection. Oh, spinning round is the supercar, I think. Rob Bowden. Oh dear, well, that's a bit of a curse. He was up 10 places and uh, now he's, I think, gone into the wall. Yeah, just keep an eye on that car and see how it goes. It's going to cut back here just from the start. Stuart Vaughan still coming along. He's got that car now up into the 10 as well. Uh, he's going to start hunting down Jamie Stovall. So there's a second gap between those guys up in the ninth position. Job Stewart not that far behind, still in that 94. And uh, he is hanging on in the PRS car. Oh, PSS car, sorry. Um, so those guys have a good run. Matthew Deer involved in a bit for KRF. He is trying to put a move on the car of Chris Burns for Reaper Sim Racing, gets that move done into one, so that's a, a nice pass there. Almost thought we might have seen um, Dave Miller come along for the ride and potentially try and get that car down the inside as well, but uh, just pulled it up in time. Those guys are currently down in the 23rd. However, up 12 spots from where they started, so a, uh, a good opening eight laps for them. Yeah, and a big part of this race is going to be staying on the lead lap, of course, as I was saying before, pace cars expected. And at the moment, the field is pretty bunched up. I don't know if we can maybe get the uh, track map up, but you can see that uh, there's not been a massive field spread. Currently, these guys, about half a minute off the lead, which considering we're on lap eight and we've had as much batting as we have had, um, it's relatively close. Of course, has had issues for the front runs. I'm sure that cost them a bit of time. But... Yeah, this isn't. Uh, this is a decently long lap as well. One minute sports here, about 100 seconds. And so, if you can stay on the lead lap, you're always within a chance. Uh, David Miller, then, I don't think he's going to be close enough for the bus stop. We don't usually see too many moves in the bus stop, as I say that. We literally got two, two wide. 
uh, just ahead of us. And we might actually be able to gain a lot of time on these two drivers because they are fighting side by side and that's just going to lose them so much time. Fortunately for Miller, he's not got a superb exit. However, uh, for uh, the driver ahead of him, he's going to be able to get a, a really good launch hit. Uh, Miller is going to be able to move ahead, perhaps a, a slowdown, I can only imagine, for uh, Cameron Stuber there. Yeah, it looked like a little bit of a, uh, a slowdown as a result of that. We're also seeing to a, another penalty for the 303 car. Uh, they've got a drive through as well, so that's um, going to bump them down the order. That car currently sitting uh, set. down in 41st, so that's got uh, okay. Paul Lee just behind the wheel. Yeah, so uh, troubles for them. Uh, El Nabi uh, he's got, just got past Stuart Vaughan, I believe. Uh, about half a tenth of a second between them. Might even be side by side at the moment. Here they are. And El Nabi just about pulling ahead. And I think we'll have his teammate next to deal with. So recovery for them. This race could have turned a little bit like Spa after an awful start. I'm not sure where they dropped down to. I don't think they dropped too far down. Maybe down into about tenth place. Um, but, uh, well, yeah, they were 12th at the start of this lap. But, uh, yeah, up into 10th already, profitable lap this. And they've got about four cars in front of them, which they can just line up and perhaps get past pretty quickly. First up, their teammates. And, uh, yeah, this should be uh, pretty simple for them, I believe. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of um, these guys just helping each other out and move those cars around. Obviously, being the teammates, you don't want to have any issues there. As we see a couple of passes going on, we've got um, one of the Jacob Knight car getting a move put on him by Job Stewart, actually just down the inside, able to pull that up, gets the car lined up. And you just see the, the amount of movement between these guys under braking, just where they're trying to place these cars and get the, uh, the most out of them on grip. But uh, just ahead, Andrew Dyson there for DPR Racing doing a really solid job. Uh, up 10 spots from where he started, up into six. So that's a fantastic effort early on for him. He's going to come under a huge amount of attack now uh, from the car of Job Stewart there. So we'll keep an eye on that. Seeing a penalty also on the screen there. Uh, lap four, turn one, Matt Stratford involved in that. So he will have a drive-through penalty. Uh, that's going to drop Stratford down a fair bit in the order. So we to find a... Uh, position for him. He's currently in the 17th spot, so that's uh, not ideal for him. He's currently battling, battling Brett Greedis there, so uh, something for him to have to come in. But this group of cars from 6th from position down to, where are we, down to 15th at the moment, really starting to form up a fantastic little battle pack. Yeah, because I think Dyson, I mean, with full respect to him for this start, I mean, he's up 10 places over. I think most of that's just been uh, because he's been mega consistent, not making mistakes, unlike many drivers around him. And uh, it's uh, enabled him to kind of get to the front, maybe a little bit of a queue forming behind him, as uh, I think just losing that place now to Joe Stewart. Stewart up about 10 places now from where he fell down in the opening lap, so uh, uh, even higher than where he started. Really impressive from him. He's lapping faster than third place man Corey Preston at the moment, as Side by side for the lead, Carl Stokes, uh, still ahead of James Scott. And uh, you'd think that they're working together. It seemed a little bit racy though. And are they going to go racy again into the horseshoe? They are. And moving ahead is James Scott then. So the winner of the first two rounds of the championship. This is early stages, uh, but he is currently the race leader here at Daytona as well. Matt Stratford, by the way into the pits the 54 car do we believe that's a, a penalty or just an alternative pit stop no i think that was for the uh the drive-through penalty that he was awarded just before there so uh clearing that out of the way early which is um not a bad idea obviously they'll be playing playing or praying for those safety cars later on to get themselves back up the front uh, but i'm keeping an eye just on the way those two ert cars are working they're doing a fantastic job extending their gap at the moment to just over a second and uh, working very, very well together to drop back a little further in the in the field here. Cameron Stuber down in 19th. He has got Matthew Deer for KRF right behind him and uh, Dave Miller along. So those guys are not too far off the tail of uh, Chris Barnes there down in the 18th position and uh, having a pretty solid run for all three of these cars moving well up the, uh, the order from where they've all started. 
Yes, Stuber up there. Oh, spin and into the wall is Chris Barnes. Well, I don't know if that's a curse, um, but I think we've had already one today. 74 car, Reaper Sim Racing. Oh, well, and around here, if you go into the wall, you can get stuck. Fortunately for him, he's been able to get back out again. But that is 10 places lost, or nearly 10 places lost. That car seems to look okay. What you don't want to do is, of course, bash in a couple of headlights. At this point, you could probably get away with it, but later on, probably not. However, I think he's going to be able to continue quite nicely. And uh, a lot of damage, though, for these drivers. And it always comes back to that question, I think, Daniel, how do you take your faster pair at your first pit stop? I mean, I, I think I spoke quite a bit about it at Spa, but depending on how confident you are for the rest of the race, you can take your faster pair early and fix a little bit of damage, or you can save it for uh, a more troublesome situation. And these guys are going to have these decisions to make at this first pit stop. Yeah, it's something that will um, certainly be considering. Obviously, a lot of team chatter going on behind the scenes for these guys to sort that out. Um, things keeping on Chris Barnes. He's not looking too bad after that bit of a, a spin and contact. Car doesn't look too bad at all, so he should be able to K here. I guess the big advantage for the likes of the V8s or, or any of the GTs really is uh, you've got a lot more um, strength behind these cars as opposed to some of the open wheelers. So they will take a little bit more punishment, but as you say, going to be key for these guys to determine whereabouts they want to um, utilise those fast repairs. I think if the cars are good while you're in a draft, you'll probably hang out there as long as possible. As we see uh, Corey Preston now up in the third spot, Ryan O'Sullivan still right behind him. So uh, the ERT cars and the EXG Motorsport guys having a pretty good run. Um, but oh yeah, I think you, you're likely to want to hang on to those as long as possible. Now here's a big one for us though. Uh, lap, one, uh, lap 4, turn 1, the car 088 of James Scott. They have a drive-through penalty for um, for contact. I believe that will be as a result of the contact we saw there with Taliancic into the wall. So they are coming down the lane now to serve that penalty. Oh, this will be fascinating where they come back out. There was a 10-second gap between O'Sullivan and Kimmons. And you know what? By the lack of engine noises, he's not going to be too far down. Scott is uh, still trending down the pits as uh, I think we're trying to... Uh, yeah, uh, here, he, here he is. And uh, yeah, we'll come out, I believe, in fifth place still. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on where he comes out there. Let's just duck back to a little bit of a replay there and you can see some great avoidance from those cars. So able to drop back into fifth after that spot, that's not too bad for him. It will put him a fair way down the order. Uh, although, mind you, the, the top five at this point do, did have quite a, a hefty lead over the, the field. But he's now got David Kidman there. You can see just in front for Pursuits and Racing 2. And um, he'll be looking to get past there and get back up towards the front. Reminds me a bit of uh, Formula E when uh, I think I think Sam Bird got like a... As we see the plane in the background, it's always good to see that. Uh, where Sam Bird got a, uh, a penalty uh, around the Hong Kong rounds and the, the pit lane is like seven seconds lost. A little bit similar situation here where we have a short pit lane and it's a really quick pit lane as well. So of all the places for James Scott to get a penalty, this is a pretty good one. Also, he's lost quite a, li a lot less time than Michael Taniancic, the uh, Jibble 7 card. Uh, but, I mean, it was a small nudge and, I mean, it was... Uh, most of the time, that wouldn't even yield a penalty because it was just unlucky the way that the 7-7 car went into the wall. Um, anyway, Scott in fifth place. I think he's about to move up into fourth place. And that's the uh, benefit of uh, all those good lap times that he was setting with his teammates. And he's now got 12 seconds to catch up to the rest of the order. Difficulty now for Carl Stokes, of course. And all of a sudden, these guys aren't going to be uh, saving too much fuel for themselves. Scott moves up into fourth place and will set the charge, but you'd expect uh, at least uh, about 20 laps for him to catch up to the drivers ahead or a safety car. Of course, two scheduled already for this race. And if we do get a car stationary out on circuit, then we will need to use the safety car for that situation as well. Uh, I think is that uh, the Evolution Racing car just losing a place there. Jacob Knight sitting just behind. Jamie Stovall then 
still in 10th place, so he's actually dropped a place, I think, since we last saw him. He was running as high as 9th previously. Just had a little bit of a poor lap, actually, did, uh, did Stobold. I'm not quite sure what the issue was there. And Stuart Bourne trying to make his way past Jake Knight now, but on his turn. And Stephen Varga as well in the 868 car, uh, sitting just behind, setting a lap time. About one and a half seconds that last tour. Yeah, the, the, the ERT car, the 27, probably just playing a pretty conservative strategy game at the moment. They'll work themselves back up into uh, into contention. We saw that at Spa. They were very, very, uh, very good there. Uh, J Jonathan Barr uh, for Middle Finger Racing. He is closing up on the back of the car of, of Chris Barnes, who we did see have that spin uh, at turn six there, just before the guys got up onto NASCAR bend, gets that car tucked in. Uh, right behind them, we've got David Wock, and not too far behind, Matt Stratford, you can see him at the bottom of the frame there, uh, for middle finger racing, working his way up. Uh, one of the big ones, we didn't see what had happened to him there. Behind all this is uh, Brian Borg there. Uh, he is a long way down as well, having to work his way back up uh, the field as well, so keep an eye on that to see how they're able to progress, but this little battle here for uh, 28th, 29th, uh, and a little further forward, not looking too bad at the moment. Yeah, I'm not sure, as you say, I'm not sure what happened to Bog, but that was very early on, definitely. He pitted on lap six of the race for 13.7 second pit stop, so I imagine that was no tyres and just topping up the fuel, so had to pick up a fast repair. Maybe was involved in that Taliancic incident, maybe he was the one who hit Taliancic. Uh, who blew Tayanchich's engine. Um, those two now actually relatively close to one another on circuit. Max Chapp, that's big on the brakes. And he just about slides his way through. It wasn't totally convincing. It doesn't have to be, though. He's uh, ahead in the 54 car. Um, was a uh, yeah, pretty great effort there. I can uh, set sights on his teammate. But yeah, uh, Tani Ancic, by the way, about half a lap off the lead and lapping a little bit slower at the moment. Uh, of course, that's the uh, the triple seven uh, car for Pursuit Sim Racing. And uh, they're in a little bit of a race of their own at the moment. David Kimmons in uh, sixth place now. He's just behind Forza El Nabi, who I believe has just been able to uh, move his way through. It's taken a little while for El Nabi to get back up to roughly waist size. Started on the second row of the grid. And he's now only three seconds behind James Scott. So just shows how many issues these drivers have had when we've got a few of the front runners all having issues. But fortunately now, I guess, Daniel, we've got uh, Scott and El Nabi on the same piece of circuit. And judging by their recent lap times, I think this could be quite interesting. Three seconds between them. I wouldn't bet against El Nabi perhaps catching by the end of this first turn. No, not at all. I think um, looking at the, the, the top speed of that car, um, unassisted there, down on the run into one, they uh, had a really good straight line speed advantage, so uh, a lot of good setup work going on with that car. You can see the bottom graphic there. Just starting to show the difference in, in lap time there. So between uh, lap 10 and 15, Forzen's actually been able to close that gap all the way down from seven, nearly 17 seconds to just over three. So uh, those guys are coming and coming fast. So we'll keep an eye on that. Can't wait to see what Harley's going to be able to do in that car later on when he gets behind the wheel uh, at the end of this first stint, which is not going to be too far off from here. A little bit further up, though, the uh, second and third position is really starting to get into a very solid scrap now. These guys working their way through. Uh, off NASCAR 2. We have got a slow car too at the yeah, uh, exit Whiting. of the bus stop. Keep an eye on that. But uh, these guys are just not getting a move done into the bus stop there. I wonder if we're going to have to get a safety car here because we'll see if Whiting is moving. Big shame for Whiting. I was just going to say how he was running in, I think, about the mid 20s and he's uh, stopped on second. Oh, I think we have got a safety car then. Certainly, the way that O'Sullivan's car is, uh, is reacting. And so the first safety car of this race and car stakes immediately coming into the pit. Oh, side by side. And this is a really good opportunity now for O'Sullivan, the 26 car, to perhaps make a jump hit if he uh, takes a little bit less fuel. 
Yeah, I think we'll see some really interesting um, strategy calls from this. I wouldn't be surprised if there is a bit of a change in position. We're obviously only 17 laps into this one. Uh, the fuel tanks will be getting down a fair bit right now. As we can see, Scott getting out of that car and they're doing a change. Uh, looks like we've got the vast majority of this field coming in the lane right now. So it's going to be very, very busy as one of the middle finger cars go through in the top of frame. Uh, Wayne Taylor's in the lane as well. So it's really, really interesting to see how this all unfolds for these guys. Apparently big tyre degradation around this circuit, despite the fact that it's at night. Um, and of course, it's not a, a, a pit stop that you lose a whole lot of time to say. Like I said earlier on, a very quick pit stop, a, quite a short one as well. And uh, it is the safety car then, Nick Holser. I wonder how many laps he'll be leading today. He'll be leading uh, a handful here. So Wayne Taylor then staying out. The top four have all stayed out. So that's, uh, that's Taylor for middle finger racing. Uh, then it's uh, the 290 car KRF Motorsports being driven by Matthew Deer. Then it's uh, Cameron Stuber, EXG Motorsports and David Miller, Bow Repairs RRT up 31 places. Cameron Stuber's up 39 places. Uh, we didn't really see this strategy work at Spa, I would say, um, down, but it just depends on when the other safety cars are. I mean, you can look like an absolute fool when you go for this if it doesn't work out for you. However, there's not necessarily anything wrong about this decision from them. It's just you need a little bit of luck to accompany you in order for it to, to get the most out of it. Yeah, it's a bit of a tough strategy to play, especially very early on. I know um, a lot of teams are going to take that conservative approach, which we saw come in, get the pit stop done, put a fresh driver in, get ready to go. As I say it in a lot in the NASCAR world, safety cars breed safety cars, so there's every potential that this could have a, uh, a chaotic return when we get there. Fingers crossed it doesn't, and I'm banging on the wood here to hope that that doesn't result in that. However, if the guys um, potentially do before that safety car, they could come in and get that stop done. But it'll be really interesting to see how much fuel these guys have been able to save over the course of the lap so far. Obviously, we got 16 laps in before that safety car came out. Where are they sitting on the fuel strategy? How much further can they go? And I guess the big thing too early on is how are they going to go now? Obviously being on older tyres comparative to the likes of um, you know, Jordan Ross, Ryan O'Sullivan, who have now got fresh tyres, fuel tanks. How much quicker are those guys going to be? Thomas Hines also staying out actually. So the top six in fact, but of course Hines has already pitted on, uh, on lap four of this race for Zuba Racing 209. Uh, they were involved in an early shunt. I can't remember what it was, though. I remember, I think they spun at the bus stop. Apologies to them that I'm, I'm not an encyclopedia on their race so far. Uh, but, uh, well, maybe feature at the front and uh, we will certainly see a lot more of them. Wayne Taylor, is he going to come into the pits or is this just a cunning plan to check the other drivers he's coming into the pits? Uh, all of them are coming into the pits. Oh, come on, guys. Mix up the strategy. We want to see some uh, some outrageous uh, calls. Greg Sharp, congratulations to him. SSF Henright Racing stays out. And that is what we want to see. Everyone else coming into the pits. Greg, stick by your, your guns. I'm sure this is the right call. I mean, it can't go too wrong for him. It's uh, relatively early in the race. Like I said, you don't lose too much time if you do have a pit stop. Uh, just moving ahead then. Um, of these guys, I think just gaining la uh, back a lap was Paul Lee. So he was a lap down. However, I think because those other cars pitted, it was mega lucky for him. And it meant that uh, he could, uh, he, he wasn't the race leader, yet he was at the front of the train. So he had to pass the safety car. And so uh, a little bit of fortune for him there, because if they hadn't pitted, then he would have uh, remained a lap down. Instead, he'll be able to get back onto the lead up, uh, which really does help the 303 car of uh, Riot Sim Racing. Uh, so, yep, like I said, everyone coming into the pits, apart from Sharp. Uh, also, Marty Hansen, down in 19th place, not pitting. And that is lit that's pretty much it. Paul Lee as well um, pitted a few laps ago already. So, uh, very, uh, very much a consensus with this... Uh, with this at the moment. Yeah, I think we'll see um, all those cars that have gone around again get back on the lap. Looks like Paul Lee's working his way down through the bus stop right now. We're hearing safety car in this lap as well as the guys run up towards turn six and um, 
It'll be really, really interesting to see how Greg Sharp goes. Obviously, we've got a pretty wide restart range for these cars, so they can basically start from the exit of uh, NASCAR 4 all the way up to the start line. There's a little bit of overlap that these guys, drivers can have just before they get up to the start area, so around the entrance to the pit lane. Um, but Greg's now going to want to try and back this field up a little bit. You see him working through three. And when does he decide to make that jump? Will he wait as late as possible, try and hold the guys off, or will he go a little early and try and um, go a little bit on a different strategy here? It's a tricky situation here because it is such a long run down to um, to the pit lane that you, you got to leave a massive gap and because the overspeed is going to be tremendous and you really do not want to overshoot it. I've seen that in real life a lot, a lot of the time. However, we, we rarely see it in sim racing. These guys really are very apt at it. And of course, there's uh, not too much with that in turn one. However, old tyres, we're expecting him to be a couple of seconds a lap slower just with the old tyres. A little bit less fuel might get him a little bit of time back. However, this is going to be a tricky few laps for Greg Sharp. And he's got to be very mature about it if he's overtaken then so be it. I'm sure he will not fight these guys uh, behind him. However, he doesn't want to lose too much time. Now Nick Holster, to be fair to him, he's uh, putting a lot of power down. He's allowing Greg Sharp to build a gap. That's smart driving from the uh, from the race stewards. And Sharp will soon be able to get underway, already increasing the pace himself. Jordan Russell's going to have to get a bit closer here. And there could be a few gaps perhaps formed by that little bit of uh, acceleration from Sharp through the bus stop chicane. Still hesitating until he puts his foot down. Watch out for some of the uh, drivers who have had issues a little bit further down in the order, making their way through. Brian Borg uh, will be one to watch out for. Also, Mark Diddle in uh, in 26th position at the front. Greg Sharp, SSF, Henright Racing, 747. The safety car has got to the pits. Sharp. Hasn't put his foot down yet, so he's leaving it until the last moment, trying to limit the slipstream effect that the other drivers can have on him. And he's going to leave this to the last moment. Now he puts his foot down, and now Greg Sharp will start lap 19 of this race, first restart of the race. And that is a, a comfortable getaway for him. No opportunity for Jordan Ross from the get-go. However, expect them to really bunch up in the uh, in, in the midfield. Yeah, good solid jump there from Greg's able to open up a couple of tenths lead, which will uh, be helping him that car a little bit of damage on it as well. Oh, the nice. midfield getting through reasonably well. Uh, no major issues there with riding down uh, a little further on. Rob Harris, who had some issues earlier on. I wish on Thompson behind the wheel. That car well down the order, down in 25th, but still on that lead lap. So looking for them to come through. Thomas Hins for Super Racing, working his way back up. After the stop, they fell down quite a ways, but are, uh, are getting back up towards the pointy end, so we'll keep an eye there. But uh, up front, the guys are uh, starting to work their way out of six, and it looks like we've had uh, the ERT boys go through. Greg Sharp starting to fall back, sitting in third. Going to start coming un under a lot of attack now from EXG Red and the ERT 088. Actually, he's also got uh, Forza Nabi in the, the Mark 1 pink car there. Actually, sorry, that's Harley Haber in that car now as well. So, oh, yeah, a bit of three wide action into the bus stop. Here we go, Haber. That is brave. Going right down to the inside. Now, is there going to be contact going into the bus stop? They've got to be ever so careful. Oh, Haber almost with contact. And that is miraculous how they haven't made contact there. Brilliant driving from the pair of them. And Greg Sharp, well, it, unfortunately for him, he hasn't got a draft. So that's literally the place where you uh, don't want to be. Oh, apologies. He's at the back of this train. A lot going on at this start. This is big, though, because Haber uh, trying to get past Bradley Ratsu. Ethan Greg Goltz for ERT, the former race leaders, just behind. And here comes Haber, one of the fastest drivers out on track. He's deep on the brakes and Haber moves up into third place. Can he get it stopped though going into turn one? He's very wide and he will have the inside for the horseshoe though. However, he's just not going to keep enough of his car alongside unless he's mega deep on the brakes. Leaving space, that was very courteous undoubtedly from Bradley Rue 2 and very sensible as well. And that is some brilliant driving from the EXG Motorsports red car to hang on to third place on this restart. 
Yeah, a little surprised actually Bradley left that room there. I thought he might have closed the door a bit more. You see Haber with a big lockup slides that car in. That's a uh, really forceful move. Lucky to actually pull that up and going through behind Ethan Grigolt uh, as well. But, uh, Ethan trying to get that car down the inside as well. So positional changes for both these driver. Grigolt getting a fantastic run up out of six. I think he's going to get this move done quite easily on Haber, but now Haber's going to get this draft advantage on the run down into the bus stop, so we'll keep an eye here and see how that goes. Bloody Bradley Raddy, sorry, falling down a little bit further, Greg Sharp, down a couple of seconds as well. How do these guys go through? We saw it too wide last lap. Can they pull it off again? Yeah, this time they go into single file. It's a much faster uh, stretch jeep. Uh, Haber moves back ahead. Did we see Greg Galtz driving that uh, 088 car at Spa? Or was it someone else who was driving it? No, first uh, driving the championship for Greg Galtz in that car. So uh, he's working alongside um, James, uh, James there. Scott. And uh, I think this is going to be a very, very strong pairing, these two. I, If I was a betting man, which I'm not, but if I was, I'd uh, be certainly looking at that car to be very, very competitive later on. The two teammates out the front, Jordan Ross, Rhino Sullivan, just trying to get a little bit of a gap. Uh, also, Thomas Hins with a bit of a, uh, a penalty through the bus stop. So that was on the restart turn, uh, lap 19. So he has a drive through to come down and that's uh, gonna affect them. Hins looking pretty comfortable in the order down in the 25th spot. So that will hurt them and they potentially will lose that train uh, slipstream advantage of the, of the train as it goes around. Brian Borg not making much progress at the moment in 16th place, the uh, car number one. Uh, also, uh, Mike Dillo, uh, uh, sorry, Mark Dillo has had is that the right car, the uh, 299 uh, car, uh, apologies, uh, looking out for, oh, I'll oh, find that, oh, ap apologies, Pursuit Sim Racing uh, number one, the uh, triple seven car. Uh, they are currently running in 14th place, so James Mickey, uh having a, a, a good restart here. He's up into uh, 14th place and just set a lap faster than the race leaders. So he's uh, very quick, taking over from his teammate Michael Talianchich. You can just see in front there, that is uh, losing quite a few places. Um, one of the judges who didn't pit earlier on, caught, uh, apologies, Greg Sharp, of course, in the 015 car. So that will be next up for James McKee, which uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue for him there. Should be an easy 13th place for him to gain. Haber's got, uh, yeah, Haber's still ahead then of uh, Greg Galt and the top five all in a queue. Also, Blake Purdy gets him past Kenneth Latter going into turn one. That's for sixth place and Latter now just falling behind McKnight as well. Oh, he needs to make sure he doesn't make contact and uh, he's having to jump onto the bricks, flashing the lights there in frustration. I think it's Adam Griggs who's uh, now dropped behind Tom Free and oh, now Griggs is uh, under pressure from uh, another uh, Mac one car and he's dropped yeah, behind Stephen, Stephen Barger. Stephen Barger there getting up in Involved. And I'm going to be interested to see, obviously, these guys came in a couple laps ago. The tyres should be back up to pressure. McKnight going very, very defensive. He's trying to keep Lada behind him. Might actually go for a ride on board here with Ken and just get a good idea of how these cars are operating and moving around around this circus. We see him on the exit of six. I think they both, actually, both those cars absorbing that bump really, really well. A good drive out. See just a little bit of a wiggle, but I think we might ride on for the rest of this lap and just watch what these guys do behind the wheel. How would you say the slipstream effect is with these new V8 supercars compared to the old ones? Because I know in the old ones it was quite weak. Um, I mean, I haven't done too many broadcasts with these new ones, but is it a little bit stronger now? Uh, I think the draft advantage is probably very, very similar to what we expected out of the old car, uh, which you see there on the onboard. It didn't get a lot of um, gain on the run up. I think this will be a really good representation of it. You see McKnight was able to gain a little bit of advantage on that exit, but um, I think Kenneth here should be able to close close up a little bit, but looking at the way these cars are moving, they're not really sucking up as much as I thought they would have here. And I mean, the other thing is too, as you can see the guys weaving all around the circuit here, that has a little bit to do with the uh, the overall setup of these cars. Wherever they position that wing, how is that going to impact the, the straight line speed? As we see a, uh, a change of position there, oh, Tom Freer getting the be... nose down the inside. Well, that's an accidental move, I think, from 
uh, Varga uh, to move up into nice place. He was going in hot. And I think watching his mirrors intensely. And, oh dear, and Varga's gone deep again. And well, this time he's really lost out. Well, he, he kind of had a warning sign already, nearly hitting his own teammate going into turn one. And on that occasion, he did hit uh, Tom Freer. He had a couple of really nice laps moving up into the top 10. Um, and that beat Sim Racing 717, dropping way down the order. And it's uh, really dispersed this battle in the lower ends of the top 10. And uh, I think that might be a penalty for Varga potentially coming up. Here, here it was. Yeah, here's the replay there. You can see um, Varga, late move, just locking the, the brakes so locked up and uh, that accident caused, I think, a little bit of avoidance there. Um, Falada trying to, to get around that, but that will certainly catch the attention of race control. By the way, all those cars are back underway as well, so no one stuck out there on track, which is good news. Um, we'll see what the... Uh, race stewards deem that as far as the penalty goes bradley ratu now currently in third up three spots he's got harley Hay. you can see him right there behind uh rhino sullivan who actually stayed in the car on that stop so that's a uh, a surprising change there getting on with it but there's the move haber gets that uh, mark one car up under uh the car there of bradley ratu easily before uh, the run into turn one. So those cars are set up very, very nicely. Change out the front. Jordan Ross, Ethan Regalt still going out at the two teammates for ERT. They're not going to want to be in either of these cars. They are looking extremely strong already in this endurance championship and they want to continue to build solid points here. So we pretty much got back to where we were at the start before the well, before the issues for the 21 and the 088, remember the 21 having a, an awful start, dropping over 10 places off the line, and then the 088 picking up a, a penalty, a drive through penalty for making contact with another car. However, they've both been able to fight their way back up to the front, such was the safety car, because they were about uh, 20 seconds off the lead earlier on. And just, I think, making sure Harley Haber, I think he was really eager to get past Bradley with two straight away there, just so he could stay in the toe of these top two because they were pulling away earlier on just before that penalty uh, for uh, James Scott. And just outside of the range at the moment, about a second behind is Harley Haber. So he had to produce some good laps if he's going to kind of join in that uh, three car battle for the race lead. Uh, top five, very close. Then it's Blake Purdy in uh, in sixth place for Pursuit Sim Racing. And then, of course, the ERT car of uh, Jane McKnight running in uh, in seventh place just behind. We, yeah, quite separated now. All those top ten. Brian Borg up, uh, back up into the top ten now. We were saying earlier on, or, or you were certainly saying earlier on, Daniel, how, you know, they'd inevitably find themselves quite far up the order. And uh, that's kind of happened here. Just very consistent, they know how to rack up the points the uh, Premier Racing Team and that is what they've done. Also, still in 14th place is Greg Sharp. That is a mighty effort from Greg Sharp considering that he's on atrocious tyres. Uh, he's done a brilliant job at uh, holding on to these places and you know what Daniel, I, I think this strategy might genuinely work out for him because he's still up 12 places from his start. I think early on he was running in about 20th position. It's still got five seconds to 20th place and it, its lap times are not too bad. He's lapping about a second and a half slower than the drivers around him. So he's going to have to pit in a little bit early. But no, I, I, I don't think this was a, a bad strategy call from SSF Penwright Racing to keep him out during the pace car. No, it's, it's uh, certainly an interesting car. I'm keeping an eye on just how he's going around the lap at the moment. Uh, the car obviously a few minor scrapes and bumps around it, but I'm starting to notice, notice a little bit of struggle with getting the power down um, through a couple of these slower corners. The car washing, as you can see there, out towards that line, and he's just struggling to get uh, maximum traction off some of those slower corners. You can see that gap between uh, Kenneth Ladder and himself opening up a little bit. Uh, we did also see, too, a penalty issued for Stephen Varga uh, as a result of that contact down into Turn 3 for the Mark 1 team as well, so they will have to come in and uh, they're going to drop down even further. But yeah, the, the guys out there having a pretty good run. Greg actually almost getting a chance there at uh, Craig uh, Asplund 
in the uh, tank SRT T1 car as well. So um, if they can keep in the draft, certainly could play out well for him. He's got uh, Daniel Stevens from Little Finger Racing not that far behind as well. So a little train is starting to form up here, but um, they obviously are starting to fall down a little bit further. The got battle, I think, might be jump up here towards the front, really starting to heat up as well. Uh, Ethan Grigolt, Jordan Ross, Harley Haber, Ryan O'Sullivan, as we see it up on screen now. Actually, sorry, include Bradley Ratu in that as well. Our top five are going for it here. Lap 26, 50 minutes into this race. Absolutely nothing separating these cars at the moment. So what was the Mac 1 car which got a penalty, did you say? Uh, that was the car of Stephen Varga, the ah, 8 cool. okay. eight. So they're working their way back up. They do need to come down the lane to, to, to serve that, but um, that will be fine there. They should be able to get back up without too much trouble. But this big battle here down for the top five really starting to get interesting. Uh, got a fist full of ERT cars dominating positions one, two, and four. The car of Haley Haber there in the Mark 1 Esports pink car up into third. Those guys on the rebound after some earlier issues. Big surprise at the moment. The, uh, the EXG Motorsports car, Bradley Ratu, hanging on and um, putting on a fantastic run for those guys there as we cut down to some fantastic shots of these cars working their way down through the bus stop. You can just see the slide and attitude on those cars as they get down there. Yeah, a lot of uh, lateral, uh, lateral movement for the, uh, the cars as they uh, negotiate the bus stop and then uh, move on to this uh, final stretch. Jordan Ross failing to uh, close in too much. I think they were fighting a little bit, uh, just uh, maybe a lap ago were the top two. Of course, Good got managed to gain past uh, Ross, who is uh, pretty deep into turn wise. It's, it's just, oh, wow, and uh, Thu, well, I thought he was deep on the brakes. I mean, did uh, Harley Haber break for that corner? Because, I mean, incredibly, Ross managed to gain about two car lengths on his teammate. And yet Harbour still managed to get past. That's an incredible move. Uh, shows how confident he is into turn one. And there we are. Moves up into second place. Great effort. Yeah, really strong braking effort there. I was a little surprised he came from the distance he did to get that move done. But uh, really strong awareness there. Uh, from Jordan Ross, not obviously wanting to get involved. He's thinking of a championship and trying to gain those extra points. But uh, just open the door just a touch and allowed to, uh, to get back into line and, and they'll continue to fight. But Haber, last time by, a little slower than what I would have thought, uh, especially given the draft. He did a 146.2, a little slower than Jordan Ross, who did a 146.1. Um, guys out towards the front, though, the quickest car last time by, Ethan Rigolt, uh, a 145.9. So they are starting to, to gain a little bit of a gap out to just on a second, but that draft's starting to come back into play a little bit as the guys make their way down and towards the bus stop. It gained about one and a half tenths of a second just down that one straight did, uh, did Harley Haber. wonder if he's running a little bit less wing. We'll see what the gap is here. Of course, you can check out the live timing by uh, SDK Gaming. Uh, the link will be in the description below. And you can see all the interview intervals with drivers. And it's quite eye-opening in terms of the straight line speed for these guys. Because at the start of this uh, straight, or going into NASCAR 3, uh, the gap between the top two was about 1.2 seconds. By the end of it, it's down to 6 tenths of a second. That's an incredible overspeed there from Harley Haber. It really does give us an indication that they are running a lot less wing might be struggling through the corners and just through that turn one losing about a tenth of a second however and you've got uh boy like a second advantage i imagine down the straight as uh, mac one esports pink have and uh really could be very dangerous especially with their race craft that's uh suggests why they have been so good at overtaking daniel stevens for middle finger racing 66 rounds and who did he make contact with I'm not quite sure, but Steven's yeah, we'll down to, to 21st. Jump back to a replay on that as uh, Scott's able to bring that up for us. Thank you very much. Keep an eye on that because that's a, a big contact on the running. So Kane Houston then involved. I think that was a little bit of contact there, as you say, from Ken Houston, just finding the rear quarter of um, of that middle finger motorsports uh, racing car there. So that's um, a 
little bit unfortunate, no doubt uh, race control will be reviewing that and I'll keep an eye out uh, there. So we'll keep an eye where they uh, came back after that, that car well down the order now as a result. So um, Daniel Stevens down in the 21st position after that spin, so he lost four positions as a result of that. Up on screen though, Matthew Deer closing up on the back of the PRA 029, Connor McCluskey uh, just ahead of him there. These guys are scrapping down over 17th and 18th right now. Um, both with some pretty solid positional gains that must be set up through the pack. Plus me uh, up, or his team, sorry, up seven positions. Cariff F, F Motorsports card in Roma Deer at the moment up 11. So those guys really coming on strong. Yeah, good pace. Remember, all these drivers are on the same length, uh, same age tyres. By the way, uh, pit stop four. You were the team who stayed out earlier on. They have pitted. And uh, yeah, might be. Oh, yeah, it was for apology. It was SSF Penrite Racing, of course, the 015 car. They have come into the pit. Now, I actually just got past Andrew Johnston. So it'll be very quick. Well, uh, well Tony Gaffer now in that car, and he's got about a 20 second gap. So expect some good times from those guys. Of course, the, uh, the uh, live timing link has been posted in the description. So, uh, like I said, check it out. It's uh, very, very interesting. And. It, it uses colours and honestly as commentators we are totally incompetent and so when we have a nice uh, red standing out to us we can just straight away draw our eyes to that and uh, know what's going on it is uh, quite a use uh, undoubtedly uh, Matthew did then uh, like we were saying some good uh, progress uh, for him recently he has got Jamie Dyke on his tail, the 74 car Reaper Sim Racing, who I think have been involved in a couple of issues so far, and I think they pitted a lap late for the for their for their pit stop under the safety car. I'm pretty sure that was Reaper Sim Racing, along with a couple of others, and probably fell to the back of the train uh, due to that. Uh, so uh, they've done uh, pretty good at uh, at recovering uh, since then. In terms of a couple of the other front runners then, so Graham Borg still running in 10th place after dropping down earlier on. The triple seven car uh, of James McKee is up into 6th place, just shows their progress. A little bit under the radar with the uh, issues we've had uh, kind of around them so far, but they haven't got involved in any of those collisions. And they are up into 6th place after dropping uh, about half a lap behind earlier on. So. It kind of shows Tony how uh, you, you, you can put down these top teams, but they will come back strong. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's the uh, the cream that always rises to the top in this event, and we're, we're really starting to see that with um, those quick guys, as you say, James Mackey and um, uh, his teammate Michael Tellianch working their way back up through the field. Just in the back of shot there, Craig Asplund, Rob Harris. Uh, having a good solid scrap over 13th position at the moment. Uh, Rob Harris, his teammate Sean Thompson, a little further up earlier on in the piece, they didn't suffer some incidents which dropped them well down, but they're working well up through the field. You see Rob with a nice move there, gets that done. For those interested, Rob does stream a lot of his races on YouTube, so well worth jumping over to Rob Harris Racing to check that out. Good uh, bird's eye perspective of how that team is running around the circuit at the moment. but. Uh, Really surprised just to see the gap that Jeff Chet Bennett's been able to pull that uh, car top speed advantage really quite good at the moment. He's got about a two to three second or three to, two to three kilometer an hour advantage at the moment, and he's actually starting to close down the Mark One Esports green car of Kenneth Laddie. You can just see him top of frame and uh, getting it back up there. So that car nicely trimmed out. Rob Harris, as we say, closing in. So he got a fantastic run through the bus stop there. Yeah, you might be uh, decently close into turn one, but uh, it's uh, surprisingly difficult for these drivers at the moment to make uh, too uh, many moves at the moment. As uh, yeah, James McKee, uh, yeah, uh, uh, moving up into uh, sixth place past uh, Blake Purdy. Off track, just seeing for Craig and Spat. I don't think it has lost him too much time. Maybe just taking an alternative light. Yeah, I can only imagine he took an alternative light into turn one. And uh, well, yeah, I was this actually is what happened there. And uh, just finding that inside wall. So uh, 
caught up there with Tom Freer, so that uh, might have potentially damaged the, the uh, front wheel geometry of that car, a little bit of damage on that uh, left-hand front fender, and you can see him struggling to get that car to turn in uh, through the inner ho uh, international horseshoe there. We saw uh, an incredible season finale to the Apex Racing League Touring Car Championship yesterday on uh, on the uh, iRacing Esports Network, of course, Apex Racing TV broadcasting that as well. And uh, we saw a massive crash down into uh, turn one and a driver picked up a little bit of steering damage and uh, just couldn't stop for the next corner and ended up taking out the championship leader, which ultimately uh, decided the championship. So just a little bit of wheel damage uh, with the wall and yeah, it can make the car quite a handful, particularly initially when you're not quite sure what uh, the car uh, characteristics are. Conor McCluskey was certainly a lot uh, slower down at the back of that straight, running very wide through the bus stop. And it's going to be some run for the drivers behind. That will be a comfortable uh, for Matthew Deer to gain another place. He's having a, a good stint right now. It was a poor lap last time round, but he must have just got involved in a little bit of an incident. A 49.3, that's uh, four seconds slower than the lap times that they have done early on in this race also a Matt Dyke trying to, uh, sorry, Jamie Dyke going around the outside. We've seen this outside line. Jim uh, used pretty well so far, Stone. Once again, if you've got the momentum, then it is very possible. And he does get ahead. So disappointing couple of corners for the 029 car. Yeah, a little unfortunate there. They did drop a little uh, ways down the order. We did see that um, car also, David Watt, come in and they've done a driver change as well. So Craig Asplund out after that contact. Uh, we just ticked over the one hour marks here. So 32 laps in the book. It's been a fantastic early stint. Uh, for any viewers just tuning in, Ooh, it's been it's a huge the wall. Of I think. Yeah, I think, I think he awesome. might have picked up a bit of damage a little further back in the field there. He's uh, well down. He's actually just had been passed by Thomas Hins in the Zuva entry. Potentially going to lose a spot there to Steve, uh, Steve uh, Kaluski in the GRM and Jurokar. Yeah, sorry for interrupting you there, Daniel, but yeah, it's just seemed like he fell off the circuit a little bit, but uh, I think he picked up any damage. I think he hit the wall. I hate having to deal with the traffic. That's one of the Zuba cars. Oh, and he's lost a lot of time. And he hang on to that second place. He's now two seconds off the lead. And all of a sudden, second, third, fourth, and fifth, right in a queue. Meanwhile, Ethan Grig, um, Grig Galtz has been able to get through quite seamlessly. And now it's a lapped car in the middle of Tom Freer into the pits. That's uh, strange. It's an early stop for that, those, that car, so we'll keep an eye um, on them. Be interested to see whether he does go for a positional change as a result but uh, Grugalt's able, able to extend that lead at the moment 2.3 seconds uh, over the rest of these guys so had a, a great run through that little bit of traffic plenty more ahead of them uh, in the not too distant future about another five cars currently working their way up towards turn three on the NASCAR oval there so a little bit of traffic that could potentially lean in I mean the beauty of these sort of races is it, there's a good ebb and a flow obviously you might pick up some advantage getting through some traffic but you're going to potentially lose a little bit later on so um, look for the, that gap between all those five to uh, start closing down but I was going to quickly touch on the uh, comments at the end of the, the first hour we've had quite a uh, an interesting run for any of you that's tuning in as well so we've seen quite a few drive-through penalties out there at the moment we had Michael Tully answer for, uh, for shoot sim racing uh, come in for a drive-through penalty. Also had some contact with the world, uh, wall early on, so they're working their way back up. The 303 with Paul Lee behind the wheel had a drive-through. The 299 uh, came down for a run. Our current race leaders, the 08, uh, with James Scott behind the wheel, actually had to come down the lane as well. We did have that safety car period for a couple of laps, which saw some interesting strategies come through. It must be said, we saw um, the Stealth Simforce car there uh, go around lead the start, unfortunately not able to continue it on, they dropped a little further down the order. Uh, following that we had uh, some instance there for Thomas Hintz, Matt Stratford 
Stephen Varga, and most recently we saw the uh, the contact there with uh, Houston and then Tom Freer. So uh, plenty of action in that first hour. It's going to be really interesting to see whether the pace settles down for this next hour. Obviously, 34 laps in race distance tonight, 113 Ooh. laps. You can see the guys working through some slow traffic there. Blue avoidance, I think the guys are just utilising that uh, blue flags there just to get out of the way. Smart driving there and uh, not hindering the uh, the guys a little further up the field. These cars aren't necessarily known for their manoeuvrability, but uh, right there, Harley Ava showing off the car, flattering the car because he was uh, as, uh, almost like a skier uh, um, going through a slalom there. Really good uh, car control, trying to lose as little time as possible. Remember, this is, well, uh, uh, as we've just gone through, this is the hour mark. Just think about it, 32 laps we got in for the first hour, so that's fixed at 64. And so, yeah, we'll comfortably get all the 113 laps in. So we're, we're about 30% through the race, nearly a third the way through. And uh, yeah, we will get all these laps in. Yes, we will. Apologies. Um, yeah, we're about 30% uh, uh, through the race. And yeah, we are racing as if it's the last lap. On the first lap, a few comments on the YouTube uh, saying, is this the last lap already? Uh, because uh, aggressive driving today, maybe a little bit more aggressive than we saw at Spa. But you've got to be around this circuit. If you're not being, uh, if you're not overtaking yourself, you're being overtaken. And so you've got to be proactive. You've got to be moving ahead, looking ahead at all times. Brian Borg coming into the pits. His last pit stop, Borg, was quite short. It was only 20 seconds. I don't know if that's some kind of hint as to why he's pitting on this occasion. I seriously doubt he only took two tyres. I seriously doubt that because that anyone who's ever tried that, um, most likely by accident, knows that uh, the car becomes undrivable. But uh, maybe not taking fuel at that last pit stop or maybe taking less fuel just to gain a few places. Anyway, he's into the pits and uh, we'll drop quite far back. Marlon McCullen now into that uh, into that car. Of course, the defending champion from, uh, from the Summer Series. And he's got uh, quite a big effort already coming into the pits three times that car. Yeah, they've got a lot of work to do. The, uh, just seeing them drop back down all the way down to the 26th position. So that's um, a huge run for these guys. Not ideal for Marlon. He'll be wanting to move that car well up towards the front. No doubt Brian will help him get them back up there but they've got a lot of work to do especially uh, coming in as those defending champs for keeping on here Daniel Ackland in the Synergy Sim Racing car he has got the Zuba entry Thomas Hintz there in the Commodore all over him really interesting to see how this Zuba car is set up doesn't look to be closing the, the gap down too much I wouldn't be surprised if he's utilizing um, that just for a little bit of a fuel safe maybe getting on and off the throttle just a bit I don't see him going for a move down the inside Lodi. Yeah, just backs it off, which is not a bad idea. He'll be able to save a little bit. They've got themselves a nice little bit of a gap over Conor McCluskey there down in the 15th position as well. So um, continue watching those guys. I think they'll they'll even out. Up towards the front, though, the gap's really starting to um, extend. There's a lot of lap traffic now for our top five that they are working through. Uh, race leader currently on the run down into turn five with a little bit of traffic ahead, which is cut up to him. You can see one of the Stealth Simforce cars there. Actually, both of them up in the front, so those cars well down the order, um, following their earlier runs. Uh, Tony Gafford just ahead, and uh, the other one there was Andrew Johnson just stepping aside. So uh, good awareness, but that has really changed the complexion of the front of the field. The gap's really starting to open out now. Now, it shouldn't be biased but I really am kind of supporting SSFR, uh, avoid SSF Henright Racing, uh, Tony Gaffer, who's about to drop a lap down because, you know, they mixed up the strategy and I was really hoping for them, uh, for it to work out. Their pace since they've got these uh, new tyres, because they've got fresh tyres in the rest of the field, pace hasn't been uh, particularly uh, enthralling, uh, hence why they're now jumping a lap down. However, if... Uh, if there's a pace car, then they'll move back onto the lead lap, so it's not all bad for them. Uh, but yeah, they are now a, a lap down. The former race leaders, of course, and uh, I don't think there's any bonus points, unfortunately, for leading a lap. Uh, but they certainly did uh, have their moment in the sun, undoubtedly. I'm sure they can still get a decent result out of this one. Uh, this is uh, close for uh, these positions. Uh, Bradley Ridd, too, has he just 
no, he's still in fourth place. I think he was in fourth place before. Uh, Ryan O'Sullivan uh, just about moving through as well, but really tricky for these guys to get past the uh, lap traffic. I'm surprised by the field spread, to be honest, I, I must say, now, because we saw in the first 10 laps or so, everyone was quite close, but in the second stint, the, the field is massively dispersed. A few later pit stops, to be fair. Um, but a lot more traffic than I thought that these guys would have to deal with at this point in the race. Yeah, I'm so, I'm really surprised given when we had that safety car, obviously um, the safety car was on lap 18, so about 20 laps ago. We hadn't got into the back markers at this point prior to that safety car, so I'm really surprised that, it, that we're seeing the amount of traffic around this circuit. Looks like race leader has now cleared that. He's got a pretty solid run now where he can look to gain a little bit more advantage and knowing the pace that Grigolt's had, he should be able to do that. But I'm surprised seeing a lot of alternate strategies starting to play out. We've got multiple cars now coming down the lane for their respective stops. So it's really interesting um, strategy, strategy ideas being played out for all these drivers. Yeah, we're not quite sure how long a pit stop will be. Um, we, we have a rough idea, but not anything precise enough to really uh, dictate what we think the strategies will be for these drivers. Of course, already ideas as to how many pit stops they'll need to get to the end of the race. There will be at least one more pace car involved in this one. Um, I think they could be up to five, potentially up to five random ones, plus, um, uh, 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 yeah, uh, up to five overall, and then uh, a few random, they could be random ones, plus ones to recover vehicles as well. Bad news for, well, really bad news for Haber because a few cars have just come out of the pits. We just saw about four cars coming into the pits, and three of them have come in just, uh, come out just in front of him. Meanwhile, Ethan Grigoltz, I think, has been able to avoid it also. Uh, that is uh, massive, unfortunate for him. Uh, Stephen Loxton, that was, uh, just giving way. They have now lapped all the way up to 29th position. Henry King in 28th, the last driver on the lead lap. And if we stay out for a bit longer, the, the top 15 are all pretty much within about a third of a lap of one another. So they're all pretty close and then it kind of separates uh, and then it kind of drops back quite a bit after that. And there is uh, Henry King, he'll be hoping for a pace car right now. That would be uh, quite fortunate for him, for Zuba Racing. Yeah, it would come out at a, at a pretty timely manner. You can see him just working on the back there of Daniel Stevens. He'll get a move done pretty quickly. I don't think Stevens had it off track, so I'm surprised he's just opened the door and allowed that spot to go through running that really high line through three and four he'll drop in and get a nice little draft again uh kenneth ladder though still sitting down in 10th obviously involved in that little bit of uh, earlier issue uh, that we saw from steve varga uh on lap 23 so they are uh, recovering currently sitting down in the 10th spot which is um good to see for those guys they're coming in nicely they've got a nice little gap of about two and a half seconds over the KRF car of Rob Harris, you can see just in the back of frame. So um, they're having a nice run. Jamie, James Mackey for Pursuit Sim Racing actually in the lane as well. So uh, that's uh, about an average stop on where we saw these guys come in last time. So uh, the triple seven in the lane, lap 39. Yeah, so just looking at, uh, at what we saw earlier on from uh, who, it was Tony Gaffer, wasn't it? Of course, it was uh, SFF, SSF Penwright Racing. I will get that by the end of the season. They went 26 laps uh, with the uh, pace car, so probably about uh, 25 laps normally. Uh, so these drivers all pitted on about lap 17, so should be able to go a couple more laps. So yeah, maybe just going for the undercut. Of course, fresh tires, a massive advantage uh, in these cars. Uh, by the way, uh, lap 37, turn 1, 2, 3, 1, self-penalising, no further action uh, for that one. The 2, 3, 1 car uh, was Michael uh, Spit, uh, Spitzalt for RRT Bow Repairs. So they, uh, not too many issues there, must have got caught up uh, in their own issues. Uh, Joshua Pickard, uh, currently. 
down in the 31st, having a pretty good run. Right behind you can see uh, the Stealth Simples car there, Tony Gaffer, uh, Kane Houston, who we saw have some earlier issues with a, uh, a drive-through penalty closing in as well. So these guys are now all scrapping down over that 25th position. Uh, actually, sorry, scrapping down over 31st at the moment. You can see them running down into turn one, and I don't think quite able to get that move done. So uh, Josh sitting pretty comfortable at the moment. Steve Loxton right behind him. Kank Houston actually getting a, uh, a pass done on Tony Gaffer as well. So a little bit of a positional change for those guys. Pit stop for the 26 car, the Evolution uh, Racing Team. And they are having a drive change as well. Jordan Caruso getting into that car. Uh, Michael Taliancic uh, for pursuit same race, I think was relatively close before the pit stops to these guys. He had a 39 second uh, pit stop, which is a bit longer than what we've seen for other guys, although Caruso I think is coming up to that time as well. And uh, Caruso should be able to still stay ahead of the pursuit sim racing one car. He's uh, in his own battles at the moment, so today he's trying to get past um, Marlon McCullum, which uh, is actually four position. McCullum pitted a few laps previously, had a quick pit stop as well, so he managed to jump Tali Ancic. And now, uh, Tenicic is uh, wanting that place back. Remember, the pole sits up. Tenicic, I believe, set that pole time as well, this time, with those fresher tyres. Only four lap fresher tyres, but still quite a difference. Uh, does move ahead. Uh, so, uh, a little bit. Uh, should be, these next few moves should be a bit easier for him. Not quite the quality necessarily of Marlon McCullum, except he's got Gavin Cox ahead, the triple five car who is on uh, 21 lap older tyres. You can see how Tanich just eases up to the back. The undercut is going to be a massive weapon. And uh, do we do we recall how far behind Pursuit Sim Racing were off the leaders? Because they must be lapping a couple of seconds lap faster at the moment. Yeah, they were quite a way down, but uh, as you say, the pace coming back to them quite strongly, actually. They're, they're working their way up. Well, um, Premier Racing suffering just a touch. And I know, um, over previous seasons, Talianchik, sorry, and Ramala, those guys had a lot of fantastic battles through the course of this championship, and uh, they will be, they're not going to want to work together, but I would be uh, expecting both those drivers to come back up towards the front. A couple of other cars in the lane, the 027 for Evolution Racing is in, Shift Sim Racing 3 also in the lane. Um, I think we will see some driver changes for both those cars as well. James Dyke for Reaper Racing in there as well. Tom Freer working his way back up. He's got John Latham right behind the, him. Uh, actually, yeah, right behind him. So in the middle finger car there. So those guys have a pretty solid run at this point as well. They're uh, in the 10th and 11th positions. I believe Freer was spun round at this corner earlier on. Um, completely, uh, I think by uh, Varga, uh, who ended up getting a penalty for it. Uh, he's done really well since then, Korea. He, he managed to quickly gain back some places. Um, however, I think he's got too much hope here against Caruso. Caruso, by the way, still about... Um, apologies, uh, Caruso is a little bit further back. Korea trying to cut the pressure on, but Caruso will be catching these guys very quickly. Ethan Grigg gulps into the pits, and this might set off a chain reaction with other drivers coming in. Bradley Wood 2 in the 038 car, managing to save some fuel seemingly. He's managed to stay out for another lap. So he will be the race leader as they move on to lap 42. But yeah, Greg Galtz, Haber and Ross all into the pits. That's Evolution Racing Team 88, Mac 1 Esports Pink and Evolution Racing Team 143. We'll keep an eye out on what their times are as this is getting quite close with Freya going around the outside just about maybe getting the call from his sponsor that he was clear and managing to take the normal racing line good pace like I said for Tom Fear he's up into the top 10 will drop a little bit further back once all the pit stops are done uh, but uh, some nice pace considering the age of those tyres yeah I'm really surprised the uh, the EXG car there didn't come down the lane I think that's potentially a little bit of a missed opportunity on that stop they've got a bit of traffic ahead of them which is going to uh, cause an issue that being said we're also seeing um, 
a little bit of traffic for the guys that have pitted early on as we see McMullen moving up now into the 15th as Dave Miller drops down the lane for his stop. You we'll see on that timing tree though, a multitude of cars coming down the lane. Ooh, right now we've got six in there. The, the 143 ERT car, I think it's got a, uh, maybe a stop go penalty. Uh, sorry, not stop go penalty, a speeding penalty because he was in this uh, stop for 51 seconds and now he's behind Marlon McCullum. That's Carl Stokes dropping from third position all the way down into eighth place now. Yeah, that's a, uh, a big drop for those guys. Be interesting to see now, obviously, going to take a lap or two to get those tyres up to pressure. Thinks about holding that car towards the inside. Not quite going to get it done. One thing I am noticing a little interesting on uh, the McMullen um, Premier Racing car, they're using a lot of rear brake on that car. You can see those brake discs glowing quite hot by comparison to the front. So that's um, an interesting setup option there, but uh, getting that car a little sideways and we'll, we'll see Kyle Stokes move back in underneath him. Would you say this is a circuit, saying that we've got kind of turn one, we've got different types of corners, big big and saying some small big, so it's like you want to change the brake bias, will any guys do that? Or Because that's not usually something that people do, but of course it's something that in real life drivers do. Do you think anyone will be uh, trying that? Yeah, I think all these drivers will be playing with that brake bias. Likewise, the um, anti-roll bar trims front and rear to, to continually balance those cars out over the course of the run. We've also got our race leaders in the lane as well. Uh, our driver change going, Corey Preston getting behind the wheel, Andrew Dyson and uh, Bruce Kelly in there as well. So that'll put James Scott back out the front. Fawznell Narby now up in the second position as well. And... Um, McMullen, as a result of not coming down the lane, is moving himself up now in the seventh spot there and still right behind that car of Carl Stokes. So that mega undercut then from McCullen uh, has worked quite well. Stokes getting past him, partly because of the fresh tyres, which is a disadvantage of the undercut. However, it's uh, brought McCullen a little bit more into this one. He's eight, only 18 seconds off the lead. James Scott now with a comfortable advantage because he pitted a lap earlier than his rivals um, on the most part. In fact, uh, well, yeah, El Narvi pits on the same lap too there uh, for a Mac 1 Esports Pink. And also gaining sometimes was uh, Jordan Caruso, who pitted two laps earlier than most drivers. And uh, yeah, managing to move up into third place ahead of Corey Preston, who will have a, a tough move, however, he has got three laps. Great shirt tyres. Once again, you know, keep up to date with the uh, live timing. Uh, the link is posted in the description, I believe, and also the live chat. So it's very useful for all these pit stop strategies, which are ever so important uh, for this race, especially if we get a safety car as to uh, what decisions these drivers will make. And some really interesting info for all the viewers uh, watching out there at the moment. Uh, thank you, Scott, for bringing up the, uh, the pit strategy. So Corey, the car of Corey Preston there, currently down in fourth, the EXG Motorsport car. They went 26 laps on that last stint. So that's um, out there with the best of them. Dyson also uh, 26 laps. So by comparison, the race lead is running at about 25. So I'm wondering 26, 27 would be the uh, the number that we're going to keep an eye on on laps to go to get these cars home at uh, at the end we see a change of position there with the pursuit sim racing car getting in underneath McMullen that was Job Stewart that's a uh, a good strong move set that up well and truly early and actually gaining a little bit of time uh, on the run up to the international horseshoe if that's the case then it's going to be quite simple to get to the end of the race because we're going to have uh, 56, uh, 69 laps to go, and so if you divide that by 26, you know that's 20. That, that's that's three comfortable stints. Uh, I don't think there's going to be anyone trying to get to the end of the race with only one more stop. That everyone's going to need two more stops. So this isn't too much of a, a fuel restricted race, um, and of course the time limit won't come into play unless we get a lot of safety cars. Uh, if anything, it's kind of just more a, a tyre limited race. So um, maybe the drivers who pitted a little bit early, Marlon McCullough, I think that might be a good plan because then they're going to be able to ha kind of have three even stints with their tyres rather than having maybe one really long stint with their tyres and then two short stints. Kind of want to have as even as possible because the tyre degradation is so severe. 
Uh, so I think that's a that's a good plan from Marlon McCullen, and maybe staying out for those extra laps was a bit unnecessary from the uh, Zero Three Eight Car EXG Motorsports Red. But uh, who knows? We, we, we are mere commentators trying to piece together uh, what's going out, uh, going on out on circuits. Um, hopefully you're enjoying the broadcast so far. If you are, please leave a like on the video and check out the iRacing Esports server because we've got uh, loads more V8 Supercars action, of course, and um, plenty of other series as well, involving plenty of different cars off the circuit. It's Paul Preston. And, well, he might go down that route. Well, is he okay out there? Because he seemed to be slowing down, did Paul Preston. He is coming yeah, back he, on. It's always, very disappoint back. it's always very disappointing when you go down that route because you think, oh, I'm going to be able to get back onto the circuit. No, no you can't. You have to uh, ramble across the grass and stuff. Yeah, I don't think there was any contact there, just missing the uh, the brake mark. We saw those guys battling hard down into the bus stop. Jacob Knight, actually probably the big beneficiary there, up a couple of spots now into the 16th position. Uh, Damien Johnston just hanging in behind there in 16th. But um, yeah, for the 029, they dropped well down. They got it down in 20th position at the moment. So um, that did impact them quite a long way. Keeping away Chris Barnes here down 23rd. That car had some uh, earlier contact on, I think it was lap six. A little bit of a spin to the inside wall through turn six there. Working their way back up the field, up 11 spots overall. Uh, Josh Perkett and Dave Kidman ahead of those two as well. So uh, running pretty well, which is good to see. It's a great onboard uh, shot there as the guys run down through the little kink into, six, into five, sorry, uh, exit. Nice and steady through turn five there. The car looking pretty well. It's uh, getting plenty of traction there on the exit. Yeah, it doesn't look uh, too much of a handful. Of course, on those uh, new tyres, they should be at their absolute peak at the moment. Uh, pit, they're pitting on lap 40. We're on lap 45, 46 for the leaders. Uh, Carl Stokes, has he just got past Caruso? I believe he has. And now Taliancic. Well, tries to do the same thing. Goes to the inside, Taliancic. Well, that was a bit of a dummy from him. However, that is going to be a really nice move, I believe. However, has he not? He hasn't been able to pull ahead. So the pursuits in racing one car having to hesitate once again. And uh, yeah, has to uh, wait till the bus stop. But that was nearly an awesome move going into the horseshoe. It's a shame that he couldn't pull it off because that's a. As a nice glance to the inside. Yeah, something you have to be careful of. We saw it uh, last week out of Brands Hatch with a few bold moves down towards the inside very late on the brakes. It's uh, certainly something race control will definitely be keeping an eye on because it does um, lend itself to, to plenty of incidents as a result. So we'll see how that unfolds. But uh, good to see they were able to get away relatively unscathed. But they have started to lose quite a bit of time uh, to the car of Jordan Caruso there. Yeah, maybe into uh, turn one, I think uh, definitely the best opportunity, although might be able to uh, return the favour into uh, the horseshoe. This way he got very close on the last lap, of course. Mainly the battles actually starting to calm down. This is one of the closest battles out on circuit, and we'll stick with it, I think, for a little bit longer, because the gap's down to four tenths of a second. Decent overspeed for Taliancic, maybe running a little bit uh, less rear wing as he looks to the inside going into turn one has he been able to get that move done uh no he hasn't still still three tenths of a second behind so it's close going into the hairpin as he was on the last up of course Tony Anchich on one lap older tires however he is just a little bit faster after the issues with pursuit sim racing earlier on they're 23 seconds off the lead by the way uh everyone oh we've got a really tight battle actually between King Thompson and Bowden for 12th place and they were almost three wide going into turn one it suddenly caught my attention the three of them were separated by one tenth of a second uh, but they've kind of got back into single file now not for long sean thompson down the inside and he has got that one done the 092 car krf the driver's seat he were driving uh pretty well early on i think they were running as high as about sixth place early on uh, but uh, still running in, in 12th place, so a very good effort. 
Henry King will now have to look behind to Rob Bowden to hang on to that one. King with five lap older tyres than his rivals. Yeah, good solid run um, for that car, Stuart. Uh, he's uh, paired up with uh, Rob Harris tonight, so those guys are working their way back up after that earlier incident, which is um, you know, plenty of time in this type of uh, race format, obviously four hours for these guys to work their way back up. But that car still had that one, one, at least one fast repair used already, and the uh, outright pace of them starting to come on nice and strong. Uh, looks like we're starting to see some gaps closing up towards the front. The Shoot Sim Racing car there, uh, number one in sixth position, closing up on ERT26. We'll cut to that. And a big run there for Taliancic. Going around the outside, I don't know that he's quite got that car far enough ahead. And you can see um, Kyle Stokes just keeps it on the inside. Actually, sorry, Caruso trying to keep that nose in there. Actually thinks a little bit better of it. Slots back into line. So. Uh, Good run there from Taliancic. Behind that will also uh, bring one of those middle finger cars, I believe, a lap down. Just clinging to the back of this little fight here. And um, for the battle for fifth at the moment, Taliancic and um, Caruso, not much between either of these two drivers on track. Back one, eSports Yellow coming into the pits. That's Stephen Varga, who last pitted, and Scott Gamble now going in that car. They pitted on lap 22, I think. It's really weird. They pitted about lap, uh, five laps after the safety car. Um, I can only imagine that was something to do with the penalty that they got earlier on. Uh, but that was a legit uh, pit stop, I think, on lap 21. And uh, now they've uh, pitted again. Normal pit uh, 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 stints for them. So that they were running in 10th place. That promotes everyone uh, behind them up a place. And uh, Scott Gamble will probably come out in about 30th position. So, a bit of a tricky race for them. However, they will have two short pit stops to finish this race. Interestingly, putting a lots of fuel in that car. Still going to go for a full stint, despite the fact that they're going to have kind of three relatively short stints, or two long stints and one really short stint. Uh, but pretty much everyone not... Uh, well, some drivers are going for short stints. Most drivers are still going for these full stints, and then will probably have a short stint to finish off. Um, of course, I, I, I'm not sure how much kind of driving you've done in this car, Daniel, but if, say, we're, we're coming up to the possibility of perhaps a few of these drivers getting to within about 10 laps to the end of the race and then having to put some more fuel in just to get to the end of the race. What would you say kind of the cut-off point would be in terms of not taking tyres? If you got to 10 laps to the end and needed some fuel, would you take tyres in that situation? or? Do you think uh, drivers would, would would take tires in that situation? Well, if if you're coming in at, at about ten laps to go, I think you're pretty comfortable in at least getting two, if not three, tires uh, safely covered off uh, under the fuel while it goes in. I don't think you'll be looking to try and get a driver change done at all. Uh, that just eats up a little bit too much time that you really don't have available to yourselves. But um, I think you'd at least want to be trying for for a minimum of three tires for sure. Henry King very close to Rob Bowden. Of course, also this battle as well, David Kimmons, uh, who was uh, also running very high earlier on, um, up in about sixth place. Of course, he starts in fifth place. Apologies to him. Uh, underestimating the seats of Sim Racing 717. Uh, but uh, yeah, they need to get past uh, Josh Pickhart currently. Uh, Kimmons on 11 lap fresher tyres. Also, Pickhart with a very short pit stop last time. I don't know what he put in that thing. Um, because it was only 20 seconds long, unless, uh, oh yeah, well, I, I think our systems are all working. Uh, so maybe he might come in a little bit earlier than some of his, uh, so, some rivals. Uh, but yeah, Kimmons right on his tail at the moment, probably only a matter of time till he gets past. I think uh, as Rob Bowden got past Henry King, then the uh, 010 car, uh, in fact, just staying ahead, I believe, of the Zuba Racing 209 car. I think making that move on the last lap is... I mean, just drops back for a moment. Job Stewart setting some pretty good times. He's been able to catch up to Jordan Caruso out there. That's the battle for uh, fifth, sixth and seventh with Taliancic just leading that pack. Uh, Stuart still about a second behind, but was 
nearly half a second faster on that last lap. You can see they're also having to deal with some traffic still. Currently, the top uh, top 27 cars are all on the lead lap. Scott Gamble, actually, the uh, last driver on the lead lap for Mac 1 Esports Yellow, uh, who are very competitive and on fresh tyres, so they might be very tricky to lap if the uh, race leaders do catch up and suit them. Oh, and, and the big news now, safety car out as well. Ooh. So um, random safety car coming through. That played out extremely well for that car of Scott Gamble, who I thought was potentially going to go down a lap. So um, look for them to hang out. A few guys in the lane as well. Actually, race leaders dropping into the lane while uh, that safety car. So can you get to the end of the race from here? Probably not. We think 27 laps you can go on a tank of fuel and that uh, even if they did do two stints like that you'd only get to lap 104 not a lap 113. This is a pretty good time if someone wants to roll the dice they could come in now and fuel save if their life depended on it and get to the end of the race. I'm surprised so many drivers are coming in I must say I would have thought a few drivers would have stayed out seeing that they only came into the pits about 10 laps ago some of these guys. Yeah, it's um, probably not a bad idea. While well, you've got the opportunity to take those um, those tyres and, and top up, probably not a bad way to go. Obviously, we saw um, the car of uh, Greg Sharp last time out for Stealth Sinforce roll the dice and go around, but um, they're uh, probably going to come in. I, I would be surprised if they don't come in and take a stop. But um, James Scott now slowly going around. Obviously, he will be race leader at this point once um, the cycles do change there but uh, our top five all jumping in for, for their respective stops. Yeah I haven't seen anyone who hasn't pitted. In fact actually Jacob Knight the triple four car for EXG Motorsports they didn't come in so uh, they are now in fifth position just behind this you'll see them in the background in a, in a moment. There they are um, arriving on the scene just as I pulled upon it. Apparently, that wasn't them. That may have been them. Uh, no, they're still catching up. But you'll see them in a moment. Anyway, they're fifth place. That's, that's what matters. Other drivers you haven't pitted. Um, Stephen Loxton for KRF Motorsports. They are up into 14th place. Uh, also, Reaper Sim Racing. Chris Barnes uh, not coming in. Uh, Peter Latham. Wayne Taylor. Scott Gamble. That's not surprising for Pac-1 Esports. They only pitted three laps ago. So uh, a few drivers mixing up, but none of the front runners as such. Jacob Knight's uh, around that front runner range. Uh, but uh, no, uh, not quite as much variance as we saw in the, uh, in the first pit stops. Just shows how important the fresh tyres are, really. I mean, the fact that you can, you, you think, well, I can lose 10 places, but I'll have fresher tyres, 10 lap fresher tyres. I mean, that's at least a second a lap that you're going to gain. Plus, having to take a little bit less fuel later on in the race really does show the degradation that these drivers are facing this evening. Yeah, this will be a, um, a really good time now, obviously, with the, the volume of stops that have come through. I think the, uh, the lucky car out there being that of uh, Scott Gamble, able to come back down. I think he will rejoin, as we can see, the safety car just starting to roll out. So, at least got maybe one possibly two more laps behind. This is the train working their way down around the bus stop. The uh, the pace car just sliding out of the lane. You see Nick always uh, behind the wheel of that again. So uh, great looking livery on that uh, put together by the boys at, um, uh, where was that? <laughs> Sorry, Night Rider uh, Designs? Night Rider Design, there we are. Yeah, the okay. I know car. the sponsors. Um, up there looking very, very good. I had it on the tip of my tongue. It just got away from me, but uh, the metallic chrome certainly in full effect tonight uh, under the lights here at Daytona. And um, yeah, this will be really interesting to see whether there's anyone out front of these guys. I'm surprised that a few of our lap down, lap down cars potentially didn't stay out to try and gain a few spots on the wave around when the safety car did finally deploy. Yeah, I'm not sure if anyone did try that, but I think you're right. I don't think really anyone did and you would think you know stay out get on the lead lap that's the most important thing uh nick holster that was that across the pit lane line i don't know how strict they are but that would be mega ironic if the safety car 
got a penalty. They can clear it. They do have that power. In fact, I think I have that power. Um, yes, I do. Aha. Um, also, incidents. We haven't really talked about incidents all day because there aren't many of them at Daytona, but I feel like this is a pretty good time to talk about them. So I think, um, I believe it's 30 incidents, and then for every 10 after that, you get another uh, another penalty. Um, currently, no one near 30. Uh, so the highest are Pulse Sim Racing Blue uh, with 15. Also, Middle Finger Racing 54 with 17. I'm just looking down the rest of the order. Pursuit Sim Racing 2 with 16. And SSF Penwright Racing with 17. Uh, also, GRM Endure a little bit closer with 21. And uh, EXG Mode Sports Red, uh, rather front runners, with 13. So there's a few teams uh, relatively close to... Uh, I say relatively close. Th they're on target to exceed the limit because we're not halfway through this race yet so you will have to think about it so watch out for that later on but compared to spa this uh this will be quite comfortable uh, for the drivers this will be uh, much easier of course really the uh, the main spots that you can pick up the incidents will be across the bus stop you do gain about a quarter of a second potentially if you can cut the uh, bus stop just right so you do want to keep a few of them spared for the last few laps just so you can be a little bit more liberal with those track limits if you're pursuing someone ahead or trying to defend yourself. At the moment, James Scott, no need for that because he's been in absolute control. It's almost been a, a, a rinse and repeat from Spa, I'd say, um, this race, Daniel, because, I mean, Evolution Racing Team haven't had everything go their own way. I wouldn't say they've been lucky unnecessarily. And they don't seem to be way faster than everyone else however they just kind of got that quarter of a second and they always make the right decisions and it, it kind of just turns into quite a comfortable race i'm not saying this second half of the race is going to be comfortable for them uh because like i said there's some very good opposition but so far they've done everything right despite that uh, despite that penalty they've been leading for the majority of the race yeah look, they've, they've um been a team obviously We've seen them in not only the V8 supercars, but uh, in the Porsche Cup series, really well set up with how they operate as far as strategies and pit stops and, and styles go. I think what we've seen over the course of, of this championship and in previous championships for those that have viewed uh, previously is they're a well-oiled machine. They not may not be necessarily the quickest car out there, but fundamentally they get it. They check all the boxes. And when you look at that car, no issues on it, no scrapes, no nothing. Obviously they did have the drive-through penalty for James Scott earlier in the race from uh, some incidents on lap four. They've been pretty well the standout of the field. They've gone exceptionally well and they're doing everything they need to do. Likewise, that car behind a Forza El Nabi for the Mark 1 Esports team back up into second position after their earlier incidents. And uh, here we are again, two top contending teams back at it. Here we are then, it starts in lap 53, the second restarts of the race, potentially the last restart of the race, James Scott leading the order. Horton El Nabi still in second place, there's a few lap traffic in that uh, top standing, so don't expect too many changes amongst the uh, absolute top drivers. A couple of guys just running wide, that's one of the Zuba racing drivers, I think just trying to get out of the way of the uh, drivers a lap ahead. However, lots of dancing in and out. Still these drivers, very aggressive outs on circuit and now getting a little bit of a nudge there. That was uh, one of the Evolution Racing, maybe even the uh, 27 car uh, making some contact. Could have been Stuart Vaughan perhaps uh, involved in that one. As they make their way through the uh, second horseshoe. For once again, into the wall hard is Matty Hansen, I believe. The 231 car, RRT Bow Repairs was a lap down and have uh, had a big off there and now the super racing driver again spinning around really tricky times for the lapped drivers then yeah a bit of a hard time obviously the tire pressures have come down a lot since um, the, the two laps behind the safety car for the restart i don't think either of those cars are stationary on the uh the tarmac i think we got one car down in 36 david baxter really struggling to get that car home but um should be able to but other than that pretty good start all around a little bit of contact which we kind of expect on these restarts obviously all these guys supremely uh confident in trying to have a solid battle as we see james scott coming under a bit of attack from forza on Nabi. this will be a big run from forza and the uh i think he'll get this move done and dusted 
pretty cleanly into one, as you see him go around the outside there. So uh, a great run from him there and actually easily comfortable in on the run into turn one. Corey Preston, EXG Motorsport tagging along as well. Uh, penalty for Matt Newton, the uh, 54 there, for his contact on turn three last time by as well. So um, that will be a drive through penalty for that team also. We know how quick for, uh, the um, Mac 1 Esports pink car is down the straights and certainly exhibiting that there into the lead goes Porson El Nabi there. Uh, Stephen uh, Kakosh getting an issue. He's dropped down from about 15th place, I believe. That's the uh, GRM Enduro 1 car who uh, were running in 20th place. However, they are now last of the drivers on the lead lap. You can see quite a bit of damage on that car, perhaps an instant into turn one. Oh wow, just a tap from behind then and into the wall goes uh, Karoch. Hopefully not too much damage on that car. As long as it's just front end damage then, shouldn't uh, buff out the uh, stirring too much. But a uh, big shame for them. A uh, spin like that really loses you a lot of time on uh, the uh, that start of a restart. A uh, Joe Stewart up into fifth place now. Just ahead of Jacob Knight, who, of course, has got old tyres. We haven't talked about Knight too much. He's got nine lap older tyres. You wouldn't know it, though, by that speed. He's moving alongside and maybe trying to take back fifth position that he's just lost. He's going to have to be very brave on the brakes. I doubt he's got the grip in that car. To be able to do this, almost contact, trying to squeeze his rival. You do not want to get out on the exit, or, 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 on the outside of that corner. Such is the camber. And Joe Stewart moves ahead then into fifth place. And, oh, Knight, uh, I think, has got to pay his attention now to uh, Michael Talientich in the Pursuit Sim Racing one car behind. Yeah, Job um, getting a really good move there, seeing um, Knight there, just struggling a little bit as a result of that slightly older tyre wear on that car. I think Telly should probably be able to close up and dispatch him relatively quickly, which will promote that car up into the sixth position. As you can see, a little bit of struggle there on exit out of five, which is just hurting a little bit in that gap, extending ever so slightly. Still got the top two out the front of this race, not that far apart at all but uh, these three here battling over the position reasonably close together right now and just a little bit of advantage for Joe Stewart as a result Stuart Vaughan uh, coming into a good battle here he's got uh, Sean Thompson going around the outside in that KRF drive seat car don't think they're going to get a move done into one just ahead of those as well Brian Borg who's uh, coming back up to the sharp end with his teammate Marlon McMullen getting their run nicely down through the bus stop Great run for uh, for Thompson there. Uh, he's uh, certainly uh, straight away got up to the uh, next car, Brian Borg. On the same length, the uh, same age tyres, but that was incredible for Thompson. Manages to get past one and sets his sight on the next one. They're only two seconds behind Jordan Caruso as well. He had a bit of a slower pit stop, I can only imagine, at that last pit stop for ERT26. Thompson, though, just not with that straight line speed to be able to change into turn one. Petty moves into the hairpin so far, but quite the uh, launch that he needed. Difficult to defend into this hairpin. It's such a big uh, breaking point, such a wide entry that it's very possible to go down the inside. But KIF, the driver's seat stays behind. As you're saying, the top two still pretty close, but a few more battles further down the order. A uh, Thompson this time, though, uh, much better run out of the horseshoe. It does get ahead round the outside through the kink. So, must be a little bit of a mistake from Borg, who maybe is struggling a little bit. Defending champions, of course, Premier Racing Team. And will they have to go defensive into this next corner? Bold move from the 27 ERT, Stuart Vaughan. And he gets ahead as well. So, yep, not the best time for the number one car. Uh, not the best, but uh, no, Brian, he will settle back down and should be able to get going again. You can see him considering a move. Down around the outside, that car's got quite a good run now as a result of that draft. Don't, he's going to try and use that side draft as well. I don't think he's quite close enough 
to get, actually apologies, he, he's able to easily do a Vaughan lifting and allowing that car through. So uh, Stuart, considering the long game here, obviously we've still got a long way to go in this race, just on halfway next time by. And uh, these guys, while they're only battling for 10th, not that far behind our leaders who we're actually starting to get the top three closing in on each other as well. So we'll keep an eye on that momentarily. Yeah, I've got a slow car down in the bus stop as well. So it uh, looks like he's able to get moving. Also, that was the car of Matty Henson who had those issues earlier on. And I um, don't think we'll see a safety car as a result of that. But uh, this scrap 10 at the moment, Stuart Vaughan, Brian Borg, uh, pretty interesting to see. Andrew Dyson, Henry King also starting to close up on the back of this train. Bruce Keeley was the driver who fell down the 275 Synergy Sim Racing car and yeah, was about 10th place, oh, uh, sorry, about 20th place. Let's see what happened to him. To wait for a while to uh, allow the uh, field to get past and just a self spin seemingly and tapping the wall. Shouldn't be too bad. Not 100% sure how grits all these cars are. Of course, still with the old damage model. Not the new damage model, which will be rolled out on uh, a lot more iRacing cars, hopefully. In the uh, in the near future, of course, next season. Coming up in uh, about five or six weeks. Always comes up a little bit sooner than we expect. Three-month series for anyone who uh, isn't familiar with, uh, with iRacing. Of course, you can get a three-month subscription for like like $10 or something, it's like really good value. So if you're new to our racing, do you check it out. I see most viewers though, very familiar with it. And uh, we'll absolutely know, of course, three months for each season. And yeah, hopefully next season we'll get some new cars. Seeing that these cars are relatively new, hopefully these will get the damage model. It would certainly uh, take these series up to the next level, undoubtedly, with uh, replaceable parts, of course. And Basically, just much more big crashes. That's what we want to see. Wayne Taylor uh, for Middle Finger Racing 555. Uh, is he going to be able to get past uh, Scott Gamble, who is uh, struggling a bit right now? Gamble was uh, really slow down that straight. Taylor, as if he had a, a rocket ship on the back of that car, and uh, moves up uh, moves up a place to, uh, to 16th. Bit of smoke yep. that these drives move through. Yeah, and I have a feeling Gamble might have potentially had a slowdown penalty that um, caused him to lose that spot, almost losing it again into the International Horseshoe there. Mind you, a few laps ago when we had that safety car come out on lap 51, they were moments, moments away from going a lap down. They currently find themselves up in that 17th position, so that was probably the most timely of timely manners for that car to come out and uh, help them get back up and around. So uh, they're pressing on pretty well, still up six spots from... Oh, sorry, down, sorry, seven spots from where they started. Plenty to go, but uh, very, very good. This pack uh, kind of just growing at the moment. Cameron Stuber gets involved as well for EXG Motorsports. Uh, just at the back, up 20 places for them. He does just show you the, uh, uh, the importance of qualifying. Uh, how, how many issues each of these cars have had where they started. Uh, being able to uh, to still find that, that rightful position, so to say. Uh, one of the less important qualifiers this season. Of course, next up in the championship, we uh, head to Summit Point. Quick word on uh, on Summit Point, uh, Daniel, because uh, fourth round of the championship, a track that's in, in, in superb series like this, we don't usually visit too much. It was one of the original base contents on iRacing, one of the original circuits, and there weren't too many of them. Um, it's, it's going to be great to watch on the broadcast. Some of the graphics aren't fantastic. Right but anyway, it's a, it's a really cool circuit. I, I'm a big fan of it. Will be tough to overtake, though. Man. Yeah, I think it's a, a fantastic circuit. The, these guys have been around here quite a few times uh, before as we focus on this fantastic little battle here. Uh, Jake Knight, Mokotelli Antich, Jordan Caruso all scrapping down over the sixth position, but no, the racing itself at some point, really, really good. The guys use a mix of the traditional NASCAR circuit plus the inner loop section as well. So um, presents plenty of opportunity, some really high curbs, which these cars absolutely love. And um, I think the, the racing with, with the way the circuit flows and what we can see from them, be absolutely fantastic. Might have to quickly jump up towards the 
front as well. Looks like we've got the, uh, the battle with Forzen and James still going on. We saw Forzen get past a couple of laps after the restart. Uh, these two have not really been separated by much at all. You can see Corey Preston for EXG Motorsports as well just hovering around behind these two. So uh, not much at all separating our top three, just a bit over a second at this point in time. So uh, very, very close together. But surprisingly, they have started to open up a fairly big gap over fourth position, which we saw in that early stint, now out to 4.5 seconds. By the way, Mark Dill has been disqualified. Driving for RRT bow repairs, I believe, that is because they've been stuck in the pits for a while and I think are pretty much out of the race. So I think that's just uh, very much, they are out of the race uh, message. Clearly have used all their fast repairs. Uh, they had that big crash. I don't think it was their fault as well uh, through the uh, left-handed kink that we're about to go through. And uh, went into the wall as a lap car and uh, was the end of their race. Uh, so few retirees so far, well I say a few retirees, very few retirees uh, so far in this race, only about three of them, most drivers still going out there. Uh, of course as you were saying, uh, with the uh, front three, Scott's and Preston saving a bit of fuel, but I, I, yeah, if, if I was El Nabi and if I was Mac one East boss, I'd just be happy that James Scott and ERT weren't leading at this point of the race, I'd be just give give me the lead, I, I, because I, I feel like ERT are so, uh, in, in the previous stints, ERT have been under pressure and then all of a sudden they've just been able to pull away. Maybe one lap to car holds up second place and then all of a sudden ERT are set free. So they're almost being caged by the, right now by Force and El Nabi. Yeah, definitely. I think it um, might be a good time while we consider continue to watch this battle. We might actually bring uh, the teammate Harley Haver up into the commentary booth and uh, get his opinion on it. Harley, welcome to the box, mates. Uh, oh, you guys are having a fantastic run after the, this little bit of a, a niggle at the start. How's the car feeling? How is uh, Forzan going as you guys currently leading? Yeah, doing really well at the moment, mate. Uh, obviously, the, yeah, like you touched on, the hiccup at the start, but um, it's a long race and he's done a very good job to get back to where he did under the yellow and obviously now we're pushed up to the front. So we know we've got car pace. Car feels pretty good over a stint, but... Um, with the last two rounds of AUSC, we got the fastest lap in both races. So we know that the car pace is there. We just need a little bit of luck to go our way and piece it all together from both bus drivers and we should get a good result. Well, yeah, I mean, you guys had a fantastic run coming to Spa. Obviously, a few little errors uh, crept in towards the back end of the race, which ultimately put you guys well down the order. But car pace certainly there or thereabouts. And I mean, tonight, We've seen it through qualifying and, and in total outright pace, the car being very, very good. What are your thoughts? With, obviously, we're now in the final sector or final half of this race. How are you feeling with um, strategy going forward? And obviously, I think potentially to see, I guess, yourself in the car for the closing battles? Yeah, I think at the moment, um, the strategy is going to be pretty equal between us and car 088. So, uh, look, obviously at Spa, we did try something different on strategy and uh, we just had a whole number of things go wrong in the race from my shift to dying and and uh, having to double stint pause and when we needed to swap me in the car, all that kind of stuff came together. So at the moment, we're just um, potting along. I'll be in the car pretty much after this stint to the end of the race. So long stint, but um, I assume that Greg Galt will be in the car as well. So it's going to be a good matchup. Well, yeah, definitely. You guys have been very, very um, solid out there. A couple of questions I've got, and we, we saw some really good moments of it during the broadcast, the big move into turn one. Uh, we didn't think you were quite going to get that pulled up in time. I think it was against the 26 uh, down the inside. That was a big move. How Were you, were you worried that it might not have come off or there was potential for a little bit of... Oh, I'm assuming the one you mean against, uh, I think, Ross it was at the time. Uh, yeah, look, I've been really strong into one pretty much all through testing and practice. And uh, I don't know, I kind of wing it as I go and... Uh, yeah, fired it into turn one under brakes and was pretty committed to the corner, but um, happy to pull it off. Definitely well, mate. We'll we, um, let you get back to, to watching the action. Forzan find himself in a fantastic scrap here um, with James Scott, Corey Preston, not that far behind as well, mate. But uh, before we let you go, uh, is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out and thanks to for helping you guys out so far throughout the course? 
Yeah, well, at the moment, so obviously a big thank you has to go to Chris Radisic and Mark Samuel from, from Mac one the, Those guys have been so amazing, the way that they've obviously pieced everything together with the team. So, like you said, mate, we're only halfway there, and, yeah, we're on track for a good result, but we just got to piece it all together. So uh, a bit of a shout-out to Mark. I know and all the other boys are at the 12-hour this weekend watching on the broadcast, and they've got a bit of a party going on up there, and hopefully we can bring out a good result for them. Fantastic, mate. Well, look, um, all the best for the rest of the race. No doubt we will be seeing plenty of you uh, throughout the final 40 laps. Um, and hopefully we'll get a chance to have another chat with you at the conclusion. Thanks, guys. I'll uh, go and put a show on. That was Harley Haber, their teammate, Fours and El Nabi. These boys out front at the moment. Uh, car pace very very good last time by only two hundredths of a sec rate, second separating both uh, Forzen and Scott so the uh, the Mark 1 car tuned up well and nice and I think um, probably playing a little bit of an advantage with that wing setting big move as well around the outside we'll see if we can jump back to it Corey Preston trying to get the EXG Motorsports car going around the outside not quite able to do it tucks back in the line but they are really looking very racy against the car of James Scott there for ERT Course. Still a while away till we get to the pit stops, about halfway through this stint for these guys, so the tyres will still be hanging on quite nicely. Uh, Carl Stokes, yeah, about uh, having a little bit slow on that last lap, five seconds behind. Uh, Taliancic uh, now at the head of that big pack for fifth place that we were watching a bit earlier on. I think he's been able to get past Job Stewart, quarter of a second now ahead of Stewart. Uh, Jacob Knight, big shout out to uh, Jacob Knight. Uh, for EXG Motorsports reports, he's got older tyres, nine lap older tyres. Oh, he's been able to stick in these guys' draft. That strategy, seemingly a very good call. He will have to pit a few laps earlier. All oh, contacts between Taliancic and uh, Stewart. Stewart has got back past, and now Taliancic will uh, drop into uh, in second in that line. I'm not sure how happy Michael will be with that one. We didn't quite see a clear view of it. But the Pursuit Sim Racing guy may all have a little bit of vengeance now on his mind. Russo just at the back of this uh, of this train. He may have been at the front of this train uh, a few laps ago, but being shuffled down here was... Oh, well, Stuart had his car clearly on the inside, but just understeering a bit, maybe expecting more grip from the tyres than what he got. And yeah, not a lot bit between that. And not a lot really between that. I think that was a pretty... Um even move both cars on the limit of adhesion there on the way through. As you see, just in the background, uh, a big run there for Sean Thompson, closing right up on the back. Jacob Knight, I think this will be a big run down into turn one. Knight's going to try and want to cover this off. He'll stick down the inside as we watch these guys. But uh, Thompson going to get the eight of the double draft. So look out for this. It could be almost three wide into turn one. I don't think we'll see it. But Thompson going hard around the outside, just gets it pulled up actually going to get the positional gain I think as well over Jacob Knight he does on the exit so uh, that's a great run from him right behind there Jordan Caruso hanging on in the 26 Ooh. as well oh contact that will be looked at by race control Jacob actually staying behind allows that to be redressed so potential that that won't be anything from it but uh, those two very very oh, it's a shame from uh, Jacob Knight because he was driving uh, really well and then just uh, that's, that's a completely innocent mistake. We've seen it so often in these horseshoes, different breaking points for different drivers, different lines being taken and so if you get a couple of drivers it's very easy to just misjudge where your opponent's going to slow down and Knight there giving a tap to his rival may not get a penalty for that. Uh, seeing that, of course, as you were saying, though, he did allow the driver back past. But from one battle, they are now under pressure from potentially getting involved in another battle. Andrew Dyson involved in this one. The 72 car who has got past, at least on this lap, uh, past um, Stuart Vaughan or Evolution Racing Team uh, 27. They have been um, pretty much locked together, however very much staying in the slipstream. Uh, Sean Linzel just behind. And there's Brian Borg. He was fighting with these guys, but Borg struggling quite a bit uh, in this stint. Hasn't really had the pace they had earlier on, or maybe not the same pace as his teammate. And we're still there, thereabouts in 13th position. 
Uh, has Preston... Apologies, Preston trying to get past uh, Scott. Wasn't quite going to happen for second place. Uh, we'll stick with this one, I think. Uh, Dyson and Vaughan. Uh, three tenths of a second between the uh, two of them. Yeah, really solid run here for both these guys. Still sitting down in the 10th spot. They're actually on the back of that. You've got uh, Sean Linsell closing in in the Mark 1 green car as well. So uh, those guys getting into it. We haven't really mentioned much of the, the, the green car. They're uh, sitting down in 12th, started 12th. So really solid, respectable run for them at the moment. And while they continue to close in, look for them to, to go up. They've got five cars, just four cars, sorry, just ahead of them very close proximity so uh, plenty of opportunity for that car to get uh, up inside that top 10. So I've got just 48 laps to go. I say just 48 laps to go. You can't just put just in front of anything and make it sound short. Um, I think um, but yeah, 48 laps uh, for all of these guys compared to 113. We're, we're well over half distance. We've I've got uh, about thirds of the race to go, a little bit more than that. Um, and yeah, so we'll certainly be thinking about the uh, pit stop situation. Just a bit of a reminder, the drivers are comfortable on pit stops. They will probably be coming in about 10 laps time. However, when they do come into the pits, they won't be able to get to the end of the race. So everyone's got two more stops to go. Perhaps expect a couple of drivers. Oh, we've got an issue for Craig Anspach out there. He has gone off the circuit, I believe, at the bus stop for tanked SRT T1. Certainly saw an off track for him. I think a couple of other drivers as well may have had a, a small issue. Um, also, Roy Clark is dropping down the order. He has also had an issue, I believe, at the bus stop, and perhaps even just before the bus stop as Sean Linzel out of nowhere. Hitting Stuart Vaughan, and that horseshoe is really turning into a trouble spot. And just as we were saying earlier on, when we saw a very similar incident to two other drivers, you go from battling one pack to battling another. Great shame for Stuart Vaughan. Yeah, definitely. It's a really tough corner to get in, especially in, in the V8. It's obviously, the GT's got that little bit of an aid of the traction control uh, and the ABS to, to slow those cars up, but switching over to the V8. Got to be ever so cautious of uh, just applying enough brake to, to slow it and still allow that car to turn without locking up those rears. And I think with the, the lines that we're seeing from a few of these drivers, considering trying to put that nose up on the inside or just enough to maybe warrant the, the driver ahead thinking of, of opening that door, it's resulting in a few of those coming together. But uh, certainly something that, that race control will be all over and keeping a very, very solid eye on. Just in frame at the moment, Falls and El Nabi still out front. Corey Preston, James Scott ever closer again. And uh, right behind that, we've got one of the SSF cars that was put down. We've got a slow car as well, just on the exit of turn number five. So I think, yeah, I think they're getting moving. So we may avoid a, uh, a safety car as a result of it, but uh, they are traveling very, very slowly uh, actually up on the to turn six now so that should be all clear for those guys but uh, these top three absolutely nothing separating them right now jacob knight into the pits it was almost a perfect stint from jacob knight so after not taking uh, after not pitting at the pace car was running and uh, in in about seventh place had a chance that maybe a top five in this race uh, but making contact with uh, with another driver, maybe uh, Sean Thompson, I believe he made contact with, and uh, very much undone some of that work, uh, but uh, coming into the pits for his penultimate pit stop. Will drop quite far down, but should still be on the lead lap. That will be the important thing for him. Uh, Stuart Vaughan now uh, trying to make up some time after losing it. Brian Borg, Mr. Consistent at the moment, are uh, the car number one. Uh, not doing a whole lot out there as uh, going for the switcheroo is Stuart Vaughan. Wasn't quite the opportunity. He's seen a lot of moves into that corner. Perhaps surprising seeing that you've got this next mega long straight where you can overtake instead. Will Vaughan be able to get past Borky? Uh, like I was saying, consistent uh, Premier Racing team being today. The defending champions, as I say once again. 
and haven't made too many mistakes, haven't been the fastest team out there either. However, find themselves in the top 10 with a squeaky clean car and I imagine with a couple of faster pairs still to use. Which is a pretty good position to be in with over 40 laps of the race to go. However, I think I've uh, got a bit more pace right now. Does the car behind Stuart Vaughan. Same age tyres, of course, for adds less fuel in the car. Any opportunity for the car behind? Seemingly not on that occasion. If I had to put some money on it, I, I, I would say expect uh, coming into the pits, Grindborg, very soon because I, earlier on they went for an early pit stop. And I, I, I can see them kind of going for another early pit stop here just to get out of this pack because it's uh, they're losing a lot of time right now and they might be about to lose a position. Can he defend going through the kink? Don't see too many moves here. Round the outside goes the ERT car inside for the next corner and eventually gets that move done, does Stuart Horn. Yeah, that was a move that Stuart set up for the past couple of laps. I was watching him on the exit of uh, turn three last time by. Got that car a little bit sideways, which ultimately promoted him into that bit of a crisscross we saw on the exit of five, but uh, set that up from a long way out and that was a fantastic run. Battle now for position six, Pursuits and Racing one, and Jordan Caruso. So Michael Tully and Caruso, a little bit of traffic ahead. That's Job Stewart as well going through. You can just see how much these guys are cutting that run out of uh, the bus stop there. But uh, Caruso going to have a fantastic run here now as they work their way to, through turn three. And I wouldn't be surprised if he considers a run down the outside. Don't think he's quite got the outright pace. As you can see him not really closing up too much as we see Teleantic actually dropping into pit lane so that's a uh, start of what could be for, for the rest of these stops. Stuart Vaughan I think I thought might have come in but still going around but yeah that's uh, very interesting to see now that uh, pit stops really starting to take effect. So that's 19 laps in that stint, a very short stint seeing that they can do 26 laps. We have got 43 laps to go so you don't need to be a genius mathematician to work out it's about 21 or 22 laps you need to go so expect these guys in quite soon because what you kind of want to do at, at least from what I, I can see you know anyone on the YouTube chat you know tell me that I'm an idiot or anything but if I were these guys maybe try to make these last three stints as even as possible so that you don't use mega old tyres at any uh, any point or so you get the benefit of the undercut so try to even it out to about 322 lap stints rather than 227 lap stints plus say a 15 lap stint that's that's just how i see it anyone else on the youtube got any ideas any team members of course uh, feel free to let us know uh what you guys are thinking uh, but that's uh early pit stop for tarantich and it could work well we'll be very fast for these next few laps. Yeah, obviously he'll have the, the lap or two for those tyres to come in, but once it does, I think, yeah, as you say, he'll be um, fantastically well set up. This battle still scrapping on. Our leaders ever closer again. Um, Mark Body Sports Evolution and EXG Motorsports only a bit over a second separating those three cars. They've really been able to extend over the last five or six laps a solid gap now over Kyle Stokes and Job Stewart who we were watching, but a um, Big run here, Caruso down the inside. I think he'll get this move done nicely, but uh, Stewart trying to fight back around that outside. And if he's able to hold that move off, which he's not doing at this point, that could have been a big run for him there. Just behind, you've got a couple of other cars getting involved. Those guys lapped down, still fighting for their own little bit of position. Uh, David Miller and Damon Dyke, those guys down 25th, 26th. So they won't want to get involved in this scrap to see how much traction these guys are finding out there on the exit of three. A little bit hard for both these cars, obviously well through their stint right now, but uh, pace at the moment, still very, very close. So yeah, I think you uh, said how McKnight and McCullen and uh, also Loxton coming into the pits. So uh, yeah, it wasn't a big surprise then that the car number one came into the pit. So it did go for the mega undercuts early on and it worked really well for them. So they could be a big danger. Separated a little bit now among the top three. I say separated, no nothing uh, decisive uh, amongst these top three. 
This will be... Uh, will, will any of them roll the dice? It, I guess it kind of depends how confident you are. Is a car slow on the inside? Oh, we may have just raced past uh, quite a slow speeding car. Yeah, that was the uh, the car of Kane Hansen, the 991, down in uh -huh. 35th position. So, uh, potential that car may not be able to get back to the pit lane. I'm not sure whether we can get a quick look to see if there's any damage on it at all, uh, just to see whether that's likely to get us a, a, a safety car. But um, I don't believe they've oh, called to the... If he's towed there, that will certainly be a penalty coming his or their way for the next race because uh, the race control will have a no escape policy within this series. So um, that will be very, very interesting to see how that one is. Look. Oh, geez, did he tow? I'm not 100% sure. I, th I think they did. No sign of the Mercedes pace car at the moment out on circuit. If there was a safety car, it wouldn't change the action too much, apart from bunching everyone up. There wouldn't really be any big strategy calls. Uh, a pace car with five laps to go, that would be interesting with the uh, fresh tyres. Um, but so right now it's uh, quite inevitable what the uh, drivers would do. 11s, by the way, between Corey Preston and Carl Stokes. Stokes dropping back from about three seconds behind at the start of this stint. Had some traffic to get past, so couldn't really join this pa uh, battle properly. And ever since then, it's just kind of been maybe four tenths of a second a lap slower. Just dropping a little bit of, uh, of, of time as this uh, stint has gone on. However, don't count him out. Second place in, uh, in the first endurance of the season. Second place, I believe, in the championship as well. Carl Stokes. Uh, so he certainly is a quick driver in the 1-4-3 car. Still, none of the top three come into the pits. So they're, they're saying, Sam, your, your, your advice with the coming in early, with the undercut was rubbish. And I'm not entirely surprised uh, by that. Uh, they want to go as far as they possibly can, it seems. I mean, to be fair, it's it Scott and Preston. They've been serving a lot of fuel in the slip stream. They may as well take advantage of that by going for a, uh, for a long stint. And for Zanel Nabi, I imagine he's quite enjoying leading. He doesn't want to doesn't wanna give this up. No, and I think it'll be a, a tough one for for this to see a, a change in, in the lead of the race at the moment. We're looking at the, the lap times competitively last time by Forza and just a touch slower lap, lap prior to that, a little bit quicker. So pretty good consistency. They've got a little bit of lap traffic. You can see one of the GRM cars out the front, but as you bring up the, uh, the little marker on the screen there, you can see just how much quicker they've been um, overall gaining couple of tents here and there was the last time lost a couple of tents which ultimately brought him back but the straight line advantage of the uh, the mark one car is keeping them out the front so they've got that car trimmed pretty well to perfection right now that being said james scott could be looking to save that little bit of fuel and uh, that on turn will set them up for a slightly slow stop maybe even run it a lap or two longer so uh, they're playing the conservative conservative game right now. Corey Preston dropped off a little bit as well. We saw them not too far um, or many laps ago having a really solid ding-dong for second. But uh, that car now slipping back to about the tune of eight tenths of a second. Caruso moving back up into fifth place. I'm not sure if that's a recent change or not, but of course Caruso was in fifth place, dropped down to about ninth. Uh, but uh, yeah, getting back up to that strong position just ahead of Grove Stewart. Uh, Sean Thompson, good times from Thompson. He got spun round, of course, earlier on by... Uh, oh dear, who was it? It, it, was, it was one of the drivers on older tyres, I think. And uh, dropped about five seconds behind, but he's actually been able to catch up pretty quick. And not that last lap, Sean Thompson was actually faster than the race leaders. He has 092 car. Uh, KIF, the driver's seat, some terrific times currently being set. As I said, he's just picked up a knock track. Um, but no, some really good times being set by, uh, by Sean Thompson out there. And he's uh, bringing himself back into play for a fifth placement. Yeah, well, I think those guys have um, not too far off, probably coming down the lane, but they've um, been running very, very well. Obviously, him and his teammate Rob Harris doing a fantastic job. I actually think they're closing that gap down now to the two cars ahead, the, the Jordan Crusoe and Stuart Job cars as well. So this could be a nice little scrap for these guys up over fifth position 
but we give it about two or three laps uh, for that gap to close up because they've certainly been a little bit quicker, two tenths of a second quicker than both those cars last time by, so working out well for those guys. Uh, likewise, being able to extend a fairly solid gap over Andrew Dice in that DPR number one. Uh, Sean Lindsell um, still going around. Obviously, we did see him have some contact earlier on with the 027, who's likewise come in for a pit stop and a driver change, with Stuart Vaughan getting out of that car, Jane Knight jumping into it as well. Hopefully you're enjoying the stream still. Have you enjoyed the race? It's been a very good race so far, and it's it, it's it's bubbling at the moment. I was about to say that's it's not quite boiled. That, that is kind of a sign that it's boiling. It, it's not quite boiling, basically, is my message. It's warming up, and so uh, we could be in for uh, a, a scintillating last 30 laps or so to this race. 40 laps to go, and uh, yeah, we are. But still got about 35% uh, of the race remaining. Caruso into the pits. So, uh, had enough of those tyres. Was ahead of Job Stewart. And that was a 23 lap stint. So, those guys trying to go for the three even stints. Uh, but these guys not fitting. Going to go for two or at least one long stint. Um, and then uh, maybe a couple of shorter stints to finish off the race. Uh, Brett Gerrard for mid Middle Finger Racing uh, 66. Uh, just dropping behind for a uh, for a moment there. Yeah, James Mackey back up inside the 10 now. You can see him just in front. We might uh, ride on board here with Brett. Just see how that middle figure car working. Good exit. Actually struggling a little bit. Sorry, on the exit there. The car kicking just a bit trying to get the traction down out of three. Looks pretty decent on the run through uh, through the little kink there at turn four. Uh, traction out of five is going to be very interesting. You see that the car gets onto the nose well, turns in nice. A little bit of mid-corner oversteer, which hurts him a little bit. You can see that gap as a result extending that fraction wider. I did notice uh, following the stops as well, um, like we've still got fours out, out in front, Marlon McMullen is back in the number one as well for Premier Esports, so he's taken over from Brian Borg also. So uh, look for that car to slowly work its way up. Ryan O'Sullivan jumped also into the 26, um, so he's taken that car over. They will definitely have one more driver change to get their minimum requirements in also. Also, Stephen Varga getting into the Mac 1 Esports yellow car. Uh, by the way, the order out of the drivers who have pitted then uh, is um, the 777 car, Seat Sim Racing 1. Uh, they are leading out of those guys. And then Zuva Racing 209, uh, who pitted very early on, so we'll have quite old tyres. Uh, then Evolution Racing Team 26. Uh, and then Premier Racing Team 1, Evolution Racing Team 027. So there's a few of them kind of scattered around, uh, but currently ma the majority outside the top 10. And on this lap, quite a quiet lap in terms of uh, of the pit stop so not too many drivers are ducking in if you wanted to get to the end of the race which i doubt anyone's going to be able to do you need to get to about lap 83 at least um, if you're going to do that however you'd need fuel in your pockets if you're going to do that uh lap 75 this so is El Nabi going to come into the pits we expect them to be able to go a couple more laps El Nabi into the pits though maybe trying to cover off the undercuts. However, they're all coming into the pit, so maybe that was really the limit of the fuel. 25 laps since they last pitted. A couple of those laps were under the safety car as well. So now this is uh, quite a big moment. Can Scott get back that lead? Can Preston even get back that lead? Uh, off, uh, off El Nabi, off Mac 1 Esports Pink. Remember, uh, Mac 1 Esports Pink haven't had the toe for the entire stint, so they should have to take a couple more litres of fuel than their rivals, or will they underfuel that car just to make sure that they stay in the lead? Well, keep an eye out on the pit stop times. Everyone coming into the pits who haven't already come into the pit, Sean Nenzel keeps up that form. Cameron Stuber will be next uh, to, uh, to come into the pits potentially. However, even if he does that, he won't take the lead. Still, these guys stationary. Should be stationary for a couple more seconds. 
Ethan Griggolt is back into the lead then. Evolution Racing Team 088, a quick pit stop for them, 40.93 seconds, much faster than Harley Haber, who's now into the Mac 1 Esports pink car, four, uh, three and a half seconds faster, and from a second behind, they're now a second and a half ahead. Yeah, it's a really good um, run for the EIT. Obviously, that fuel saving stint um, behind the car of Forza Nabi really paying benefits for those guys. I was really surprised watching the way Corey Preston drove the um, the EXG Motorsports car into the lane. It looked like I thought he potentially could have had a, uh, a drive through penalty for, for exceeding the pit limits there. So if he's able to pull that up in time and keep an eye as they go around the next time by, that was a, um, a big run for him as well. But surprising to see um, Haber not that far behind. I think give it a couple of laps and that battle will close up again. We've got a little bit of lap traffic ahead of these guys to contend with as well, which we'll keep an eye on. But I think these top three really going to be closing in. Keeping an eye to Marlon McMullen now up into the 10 as the, um, the pit stops are cycling their way through. Uh, Rob Harris also jumping in to the 092 KRF car, taking over from Sean Thompson there as well. So plenty of driver changes going through. I think a lot of these guys have already cycled through their minimum requirement for the three stops, which is uh, going to help set them up. They can get their faster driver in to bring these cars home. So we can see this solid little battle setting up positions 10, uh, 11, 12, pretty well throw a blanket over these three cars very, very close together on track as they run down in towards the bus stop. And we'll see that change in position with the pursuit car going up in 10. Yep, so nice move there and already dropping back quite a bit is uh, Marlon McCullen, who's now under pressure from Jamie McKnight. So that early pit stop for uh, for McCullen, uh, temporarily moving back up into the top 10, uh, but dropping down again. Brett Gerhardt into the pits. Daniel Stevens going back into that car. That's the number 66. Uh, they will drop a long way behind these guys. However, they'll probably come out in about 20th position, I imagine, will that team. So, uh, no, uh, Roy Clark, I'm looking at, is the last way he has pitted as he comes into the pits. So everyone else has uh, pitted out here. And so one more stop for these drivers to do. As long as they get to lap 80, uh, yeah, 86, they should be able to get to the end of the race. So that will be the, uh, the cutoff point for the drivers. If there's a pace car now, that would be very interesting because some drivers could perhaps get to the end of the race. But we won't talk about that unless it happens. Of course, very hypothetical, uh, undoubtedly. We might not get any more pace cars. Of course, already a couple we've had to date. And so the random ones may not be necessary due to the, a couple of the incidents we're seeing. However, if there is a car stranded out on circuit, we will get a uh, another safety car, undoubtedly. Uh, Jamie Dyke for Reaper Sim Racing. Currently running in uh, in 25th place now that he's just been overtaken by uh, David Miller in the Bow Repairs RRT car. Their teammates out of the race, of course. Both of those guys pitting uh, some of the earliest of uh, of everyone out there. So we'll have a little bit older size. Have a decent pace. Currently uh, shown by then in the, uh, in the 47s. By the way, fastest lap of the race for Harley Haver. A 43.32. The top three all just set their fastest lap of the race. All in the uh, third, uh, 43s. Haber trying to get back in to the slipstream range. And just looking ahead, it is going to get a little bit held up. Perhaps Ethan Good Goltz, it wasn't too bad for him. Good spatial awareness from the back markers. Haber runs a little bit wide. Gap at 1.45 seconds. see up on screen at the moment as well two track temps slowly coming down obviously uh in sim time at the moment uh 10 37 saw it um not too long ago when the track was still bathed in just a little bit of uh sunlight there around the 23 24 degree range so track temperatures holding up pretty well i think that's about the uh the right pace that these guys will be liking to get the most out of these tires Haber getting stuck behind the Ziva car. Oh, that's killed his momentum. Going on to NASCAR 3-4. That's probably 
three tenths of a second lost. Car is an absolute bullet though down the stretch. So those guys running very little, uh, very little trim on the rear wing. As uh, Bradley Red Two actually catching up as well, down to only six tenths of a second between second and third. Will Greg Galtz get held up going into turn one? No, he's got a clear track. So the traffic working right now. Or ERT number 88. Or is there going to be contact with Ava coming in late? Didn't quite get his car alongside to be able to make the move. Got to make it into the horseshoe. And he sure does. Tense matter right now. Because we may not get another safety car this might be where the race is to say if Haber can't get within that eight tenths of a second get back into the draft and really start to challenge Ethan Grig Galtz for the lead yeah a little bit of lap traffic also starting to impede Bradley Ratu there just going wide on the run through five but yeah I think you see if they can close that gap up say that car will be very very quick in a straight line plenty of uh, traffic still going around we've got a couple of cars just ahead there you can see one of the middle finger cars just in front there of Ethan Rigo that's the car of Matt Stratford currently down in the 33rd position a uh, little further ahead we've got about another five cars all working their way through the bus stop so these guys on the exit now it turns two and um, Stratford I think won't want to get in the way here just holds the racing line which you're entitled to do We'll keep an eye on the blue flags and we'll look for him to be ducking out of the way on the exit of the bus stop. It's cost ERT uh, a, a bit of time, I think, that on that occasion. Just looking at the relative, I don't think it's changed too much. Matthew Deer, by the way, with an issue. It's the uh, 209 KRF motorsports car. Yeah, and a little is bit of he trouble. stranded? Yeah, I think he's stationary out there. Yeah, so they lost a couple of positions and exited. We'll just jump back into a replay moment there. Actually lost it all on his own on the exit up in towards uh, turn number three there. Car getting all out of shapes through the little kink when you run through along the pit wall there and uh, that car coming to a rest alongside the tyre barrier. So that was a big hit for those guys and unfortunate they will uh, drop well out of uh, contention for this race tonight. So does that mean that we've got a safety car? I guess not by the way that Harley Abe is driving. Oh, is he going to lose second place here to Bradley Vitsu? He's been so focused on catching up to the driver ahead. And now it's Vitu, he's been a little bit more streamlined through the traffic. Right on his back bumper. By the way, Deer was disqualified. I don't know if that's because he took back to the pits for that permission or what. Uh, but he, uh, yeah, that team is definitely out of the race. So uh, shame for KRF Motorsports. Yeah, the uh, traffic here really hurt Haber this time by. You can see uh, Brad Bradley Ratu closed right up. We watched these guys fire down through the bus stop there. The gap down to two tenths of a second. So um, Haber has lost close to half a second off the back of Ethan Grigolt uh, over the last couple of laps here, struggling to get the forward momentum to start pulling away. And we're going to see Ratu trying to go around the outside. I don't know that he's going to have that total straight line speed to get the move done. You can see Haber just pulling ever so closely in front. Sneaky move up in front, shows the uh, shuts the door hard on him there and uh, really got to be cautious throwing the car around like that. Yeah, that was almost, yeah, shutting the door on the outside of the circuit there. Slightly unusual, uh, but uh, certainly showing uh, that he was going to stay ahead, that you're not coming past. It's two and a quarter seconds. That's not really pace from Haber. I think he is really quick out there, arguably quicker than Ethan Grigg Galt. However, uh, yeah, like we said, the traffic not just not working for him. Arguably, maybe he's been too aggressive in the traffic and it's cost him a bit of time. We saw at this corner on the last lap, locking up the brakes and losing uh, probably about half a second in. Once again, there, sliding the car round. Currently, the top 25 drivers still on the lead lap. Now, we haven't seen that stat change too much since the uh, last pace car. However, there is quite a bit of traffic for these guys to deal with coming up. Uh, McCrusty uh, might be in that traffic. No, he'll, he'll probably be a little bit uh, further ahead. Might catch them by the end of the race because he's 
uh, battling with uh, Gavin Cox at the moment. PRA 29 versus Middle Finger Racing. How many moves have we seen into turn one today? And McCluskey uh, does move ahead. And now, under pressure, is the driver behind of, uh, of Cox. I think Ackland straight away got past him. And now, Cox has got to be careful from the drivers behind as well. Just shows lose one position and you're probably going to lose a few more very soon afterwards. Picard's trying to get past Trevor. He stays behind now Connor, the PRA 29 car, pulling way clear of that pack. Yeah, McCluskey getting a really good solid run uh, through the infield section. A little bit of traffic in the background there, one of the SSF cars. I think that's the car of Tony Gaffer. Just breaking up this little bit of a battle, but uh, Daniel Ackland able to come through alongside McCluskey. Uh, Josh Pickett uh, up there as well. So they're coming through an EXG Motorsports, the middle figure car there, Gavin Cox though. A um, little bit of an unfortunate run for him there. He dropped down four positions as a result of all that issues. Up towards the front, we've... I was going to say up towards the front too, we still got that battle with uh, Harley Haber and the EXG Motorsports car. Those guys not losing touch of each other at all. The gap, while these guys continue to fight, ever increasing though, for uh, Ethan Grigolt, he's now got three, point two, uh, three second lead advantage last time by a couple ups ago. Sorry, that was only two and a half seconds. So um, this fight between these two really starting to impact their move forward. Something that we haven't talked about too much is uh, Jordan Ross and uh, James McKee, uh, a little bit further behind these guys, 13 and a half seconds behind. Um, Ross pitted seven laps later than McKee. So I've got fresher tyres, also took a lot more fuel though, did Ross. Though McKee will probably have a longer pit stop. The seats in racing, one, it's, uh, it, it, it started so promisingly for them, uh, safe to say, Daniel. And I realise they dropped back. Ever since they've got back up to the front, which was probably about 50 laps ago, haven't had the pace of the front runners, it seems. They've never really looked to say they could uh, get a podium in this race. They haven't been slow. I think their strategy calls have actually been pretty good so far. But uh, I don't know, just lacking that little bit of time. And we thought they'd have a little bit more pace considering that they've got pole position. Yeah, I thought the pace might have come back um, for Ross there. I mean, we saw that car, as you say, up towards the sharp end early on in the piece. They were sitting second quite comfortably and actually battling alongside the 088 ERT car, their teammate car. So I'm surprised they've kind of fallen back where they have that pace, not as close as we would have expected. But um, I mean, anything can happen. Still plenty of laps left in this. We're just over 30 laps or 31 laps still to go. So they have a chance to move their way back up. But uh, the telltale sign, they're getting very good mileage on the fuel stints as well. So look for them later on. Obviously, they've got a little bit newer tyre. They will start moving their way back up towards that uh, third position or fourth position. As you see a battle here. Josh Pickett, Daniel Ackland fighting as they go around down into turn one. Uh, the PR, sorry, McCluskey not able to get that move done. And uh, Josh Pickett staying there. McCluskey actually down two positions. We saw him last time by ahead of Daniel Ackland. He can see just in the front of shot uh, for Synergy Sim Racing. So that car down into the 19th position. Ackland up in 17th and still a really solid run there. Josh Pickett down in 18th. Yeah, so both uh, McCluskey and Cox dropping down a little bit. Rob Bowden now on their tail. Um, Bowden for the uh, Tanks SRT team. He pitted a little bit later, did Bowden, so I expect him to uh, pass these guys. Just did a 46.43, did Bowden. Uh, McCluskey a 48.23, so nearly two seconds difference between those cars. And there you can see Bowden just uh, pulling up to the back of this pack, and I think he's going to be able to make a few moves quite quickly. Pick up now behind Ackland, very close. And that last set was seven tenths faster, was that Pickett? Here he goes then, has to back out of it. You usually see drivers hesitating going into the bus stop and just try to nail this uh, run on the exit. 
it's pretty good for Pecartes. Only about quarter of a second behind on corner exit. Of course, if you want to check out the intervals between all the drivers, check out the live timing link provided by SDK Gaming, of course. It's in the description and should be uh, in the uh, live chat as well. Pick it, though. That is... Uh, what's going on with that straight line speed? He's dropping back from his driveway. Is that just the different setups or what? Yeah, a little bit surprised though. I don't know, it could be potentially a little bit of damage uh, on the car, which is ultimately slowing down the top end speed. Although you can see on that right rear quarter, or left rear quarter, sorry, a little bit of damage on the Synergy Sim Racing car, but uh, very interesting to see both straight line speeds between those two. I'm still keeping a weather eye on the cars out front and uh, surprised to see just how much of a gap is really starting to extend for our race leader, the, uh, the fight between Haber and the EXG car um, really, really hurting those guys. They're about a second off the pace right now. Ackland here still considering a move around the outside. You see him closing up. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see this car going for a run down in turn six and really, really forcing the uh, car there. Daniel Ackland to be very, very defensive. Has to open that steering. And a nice, easy move done on the inside. So really solid fight for both those drivers. Yeah, good driving, did well not to make any contact. However, much better straight line speed for Acton. Look at this. Round the outside through NASCAR 2, and he easily moves ahead. And so he almost got to get the move done into... Oh, late on the brakes and into him. Acton does well to stay out of the wall. However, that's going to be a hefty slowdown. And yeah, I am... Okay. Sorry. I was going to say, yeah, he'll get a huge slowdown for that. Actually, it's probably going to help McCluskey here, but uh, race um, stewards will probably have a review of that one to see uh, whether there's any uh, any issues resulting from that. I'm quite surprised to see um, the, the fact that Ackland hasn't really slowed down a huge amount after that contact. I imagine maybe the iRacing reference was when he had a toe on one of the laps. That is what can uh, happen where... Um, it, it, you have to slow down compared to your fastest run down that straight. And if he got a toe one time, then uh, he's maybe going a lot slower than that. As I said, I know he serves a massive slowdown. Slowdown's big time. Um, I, I imagine might escape a penalty will the uh, 45 car, just because he did slow down so much that uh, Josh Pickard didn't overtake with that. However, they're, they're yeah, just invited these other guys along to the fight. McCluskey, who they've already got past. Uh, right back onto the tail and also Bob Bowden as well he's lapping way faster than these guys for Zuba uh, apologies for a uh, tanks SRT uh, very close to these guys as well and it's been a solid um, run back up the field for uh, Rob Bowden there in the, that tank car so they've uh, obviously had a little bit of issue early on but uh, fighting themselves up in that top 20 position this scrap for second and third positions ever ongoing. A fair bit of lap traffic for these guys now to contend with about five cars just ahead. Uh, last time by the lap difference for both uh, Ethan Grigal, Haber and Ratty, only half a tenth of a second, so not much between either of them as far as outright pace goes. This traffic though, probably coming at a bad time here for Haber, who will be able to use a little bit of an advantage, but likewise, uh, Ratty gonna get the double toe, which is potentially gonna see him slingshot around the outside of this Mark 1 Esports car. So we're now on lap 86. Just for an idea, if there was a pace car right now, everyone would come into the pits to get to the end of the race, because you can, uh, if you pit now, you can get to the end of the race on one tank of fuel. So just a little bit of a reference uh, well, later on, if uh, any drivers do come into the pits, then uh, that's probably a strategic call rather than a uh, an emergency pit stop. Uh, but I don't expect anyone in for probably another 10 laps or so. Harley Haber then uh, getting a nice toe actually from the driver head. We know how quick that car is down straight, so we're not making too much of an impression uh, right now. This is uh, John Latham just in front of him. Uh, Latham, uh, a little bit disappointed that he's uh, running so far down, down five places from his start. And we've now got uh, 23rd and 24th, Jamie Dyke and David Miller just ahead. These guys are very good drivers, obviously. Oh, massive side for Haber there, did well to collect that one. These guys are very good drivers. Expect them to get, you know, top tens at a point in the season. However, oh, maybe just not going quite the way of course the, the quality field we have out here, particularly at the start of the season, is exemplary. 
Uh, Dave Adam Briggs for DPR Racing. It's the battle for eighth place. Can he keep behind uh, Purdy? Oh, almost contact, squeezing him on the inside. Just losing a little bit of grip as the camber changes on the outside of the corner. He makes a similar mistake to Haber, gets a wheel onto the grass, and that's nicely on the brakes for the 940 car. To move up back into eighth place for uh, Blake Purdy. And uh, for seat sim racing, however, I don't think these two are going to separate anytime soon. No, I think they'll still be very, very close around that circuit. Uh, one thing I do want to touch on with the, uh, the Haber incident that he saw down in the three, he also had a similar um, wiggle, which I thought potentially almost was going to throw that car around on the exit of uh, the bus stop that lap prior. So uh, he's pushing exceptionally hard to try and break that toe um, of Bradley Ratu, which ultimately potentially may be overdriving that car just a fraction as a result. But uh, those guys really firing on. Uh, this little scrap down here, ninth and oh, eighth and ninth, sorry, uh, Blake Purdy actually able to extend a bit of a gap now over Adam Briggs as we watch the guys work their way around NASCAR too. And uh, the DPR car has been there, thereabouts. They had a fantastic run early on in the race and um, keeping up their fantastic run throughout the start of the first three rounds of this championship. Yeah, beating some really good teams at the moment of these guys. You know, Premier Racing Team, Evolution Racing Team, uh, 20 uh, um, just uh, behind them. So uh, a couple of the biggest teams in the series and they're really taking it to them and currently nine seconds clear. Are lapping a little bit slower though with this bat thing as they seemingly are going to change positions once again. The 72 car takes eighth place across the line. However, can he get it stopped? Have Bridge the really struggling there for the brakes to, to pull that thing up and I will actually lose that spot as well. Oh, he's going to try to come back, but the inside was covered off. That was good driving, to be fair, from Adam Briggs because he was committed to that move. Thought that the 940 car was going to move to the outside. He didn't do so. And Briggs had to slam on the brakes in order to get that car slowed down before he hit the back of his rival. So that was uh, very nearly a crash. And We've seen so many crashes at that turn three. That's been the trouble spot. Often it's turn one. And to be fair, we did see a crash for the lead uh, in the very early stages at turn one. Uh, but it's mainly been that first horse shoot, which has been the issue for these guys to death. Oh, well, it's half as well. So they move back onto the oval. A couple of jewels then out there on the circuit. But the big packs that we saw earlier on, very much dispersing. We've got uh, Haber versus the two. We've got O'Sullivan versus Hines as well. As we're watching right now, Zuba Racing trying to move ahead. And that is nicely done there from Thomas Hines into the bus stop. We'll have to be careful going into turn one, undoubtedly. But he's up into sixth place, up nine places from his start. Yeah, really solid run from the guys at the Zuba team. We've been uh, very quiet, flowing and well under the radar for the course of this race. I mean, we spoke about... Uh, Thomas being in the car earlier on, they were well down the order, I think down around this 15th, 16th position. So uh, for them to currently be sitting inside the top 10 and, and only just a bit off the fifth that we see this car come down the lane, they are having a fantastic run. And as you say, not far to go. This will be their final stop to get these cars home. Adam Briggs and Thomas Purdy still going at it on the run into one. Uh, Briggs actually backing off just a touch, setting up on the exit there. You can see just how much the uh, both these cars trying to pick that front inside left wheel up they run here it's down along the pit wall and uh, Biggs thinking of a run almost opens the nose up to get it down into the inside just a little far back at this point once again I'm going to be an armchair expert um, I don't know can, can you call commentators armchair expert I feel like when they know as little as I do uh, you certainly can call them that and um, I mean they are fighting a lot at the moment at least it's affecting them quite a bit of time just wondering maybe if uh Slotsing into line uh, would be a bit better. To be fair, I, I say that they're in the 46s. That's that's really not too bad. Uh, they're lapping very similar to the drivers just behind them, McKnight and Harris and uh, McCullen, um, and uh, outpacing but, uh, Ryan O'Sullivan. He's up the road, so uh, no, it's, it's not too bad. But uh, they are changing places a lot and putting each other offline uh, every other corner. Are we going to see another move here? Terrific pace for the 72 car. Definitely, that's the pace that uh, that's the strength of the DPR racing car. Oh, he's way too deep. That's going to be a slowdown, and he's going to do well not to 
pull off the circuit a, a second time and that might just be this chase over because now he's going to have to serve that slowdown to be he's built so much momentum he may have already served a lot of it and uh, well that's the danger of fighting um, for, for positions yeah that was a big run uh, through there just a little further past the break market than he's been using the last couple of times by um, so that's a little unfortunate he's able to close back up but you can see him Getting on the brakes a little bit early, so I think he's got that well and truly cleared. Uh, the braking performance of that car, just a fraction better than the Pursuit Sim Racing car, but uh, these guys going very well at it. A little further back too, we've got a great battle too, starting to shape up. John Latham, uh, sorry, a little further ahead, John Latham and Jamie Dyke. These guys still scrapping over the 21st, 22nd position. And uh, another group of cars that I did see getting into a good little battle as well, Jamie McKnight and Rob Harris. Uh, only about three tenths of a second between those two out on track as they are uh, fighting over the tenth spot. But uh, plenty of battles all the way through this field. I mean, no one giving up, uh, giving an inch, and, and everyone aiming for as many points as possible. Latham just dropping in behind. Good move from Dyke around the outside in the Reaper racing car. Yeah, that's for uh, 20 second place. Dyke was a lot slow on that last lap, so maybe it's Latham who he's trying to uh, get past. Uh, late the uh, actually very similar uh, tyres as well for these guys. So maybe it was just a call out from Jamie Tyke. Comes eighth them again then. Uh, doesn't have a whole lot of overspeed. Perhaps running similar trims are these cars. They're going to be quite so uh, across the line. And Latham can't get past still. Oh, well, now he will because that's a long way off the circuit. So tyres are degrading quite a bit. And also moving through then is David Miller. So, so for uh, Jamie Dyke there, hanging on well, but way too deep on the brakes into turn one. He gives up that place. As Adam Briggs just got past Blake Purdy, that's the uh, DPR racing past the season. Too bad they're changing places so few lap. I don't know why I'm exactly surprised. Um, clearly, they, they don't care about the fact that they picked up a slowdown last time. Marlon McCullen just isn't catching these guys, though. So. He's still eight seconds behind on that last time. He was actually half a second slower. So, um, yeah, Premier Racing Team, just not with the pace today. But, as we were saying earlier on, they've kept that car squeaky clean, and they will uh, undoubtedly pick up a, a nice handful of points. However, for their championship defence, um, for McCullen's championship defence in particular, uh, they are uh, not quite accumulating the points they need to really change the top guys in the championship. Uh, by the way, Jet Bennett and Stephen Barga, EXG Motorsports Blue and Mac one Esports Yellow, both into the pits. And this will be their last pit stop of the race. Yeah, a little, uh, probably a little disappointing for both Brian Borg and, and Marlon here not to have that outright pace that they would have liked. Ultimately, they touched on the, the championship defence for Marlon here. Um, They've probably got a couple of things to work out on the setup. The car looks pretty decent getting in and out of the corners. It's just lacking that little bit of top end performance. Uh, you can just see too also in the back of frame, we've still got that battle with McKnight and Rob Harris going at it. So we might see if we can duck back to those guys. Not much between them at all either. They're uh, scrapping over that 10th position. Uh, the ERT 143 also in the lane Ooh, as silly. well. So Jordan Ross um, coming in very, very early for his stop. I'm really surprised by that. So it's just the fact that um, Key came in on lap 68. I think Ross came in on lap, like lap 75 and put loads of fuel in. So I think he's come into the pits with a lot of fuel to spare as Jordan Ross, the 143 car. Anyone from that team or anyone who's got any ideas uh, lets us know on the uh, on the YouTube chat. Uh, but uh, that's, that's that's that seems like a, quite a bold move. And we'll put it to them. Mullen McCullen also coming into the pits. That's not a big surprise because uh, they, those guys pitted quite early anyway last time. Uh, Ross, how long is he going to be stationary for? This will be interesting to compare Ross's pit stop compared to McCullen's because that should give us a decent idea of how much fuel uh, Ross still had in the car. So we see a couple of drivers coming out. Also Baxter, Latham, Barnes coming into the pits. Still the top 10 drivers yet to come to the pits. Ross, by the way, was stationary for 29 seconds, which is a Quite a quick pit stop. Um, McMullen still stationary. He's coming up to uh, 28, 29, 30. It's uh, just uh, Gerrard's just falling off the circuit, just uh, out of a uh, camera shot. 
Yeah, so McMullen then coming in uh, seven, uh, nine seconds longer than John Ross. So, yeah, John Ross coming in then with uh, probably about 10 laps of fuel remaining. Uh, that's, a, that's an interesting decision from Ross there. Just shows how much he wants those fresh tyres. Yeah, I'm a little surprised to see um, that happen as early as it did. Obviously, the track conditions haven't really moved a lot, so they should be probably reasonably well on. Obviously, we've had the uh, the run early on at the start of the race when that first safety car came out and uh, the pioneers out there, Tony Gaffer and um, uh, Greg Sharp, running along on the old tyres, and, and we saw how that really didn't make much of a difference. But uh, I think coming in early with just on 20 laps to go, maybe going to help get them up a couple of spots, but we'll really have to keep an eye on this, this fight with Hayley Haber and Bradley Ratu still ongoing. I think Haber's just started to gain a little bit of an advantage, a little bit of lap traffic just in the back of frame there that they've just negotiated. A couple of cars a little further around on NASCAR 2 there coming up, but uh, Haber's just got enough now, that gap at about half a second at the moment, but amount of time that they've lost as a result of the battling now out to eight and a half seconds gap between uh, Harley Haber and Ethan Grigol. So 20 laps to go for these guys. They should be able to stay out upwards of 10 more laps. But they could uh, come in a little bit sooner. But yeah, Batu staying very much in the uh, in the tote. Can't quite get past Haber. Freer, Vaughan, Thompson all coming into the pit. Has Ro so crucially, Jordan Ross for Evolution Racing Team 143 has got ahead of James McKee in the triple seven car. Uh, McKee with a nine second longer pit stop because he had to take some more fuel. And so uh, Evolution Racing Team 143 will be up into fifth position, we believe, when all the pit stops are sorted out. So that's a successful uh, move for them. Hence why maybe they came into the pits early on so that they knew that they'd have track position. Uh, but yeah, that is a, a good development for them. Yeah, I'm just keeping an eye too. We've got actually a car off track uh, at Lynn. the moment, stationary as well. Uh, I think that will get moving again. You can see it just getting away in the back of shot there, so no need for a safety car. But uh, interesting to see some little issues that are starting to creep into a few drivers' races now. We've seen three or four cars go off at uh, the exit of, or on the middle of turn three there very easy corner to do. I know we've done it plenty of times in, uh, in other series and, and cars, so um, unfortunate for those guys. Haven't seen any major issues other than the um, car from Redback Racing uh, having that big contact with the wall. Uh, sorry, that was KRF. It was Matt D behind the wheel of that car uh, with the big contact, but well, that generally being pretty good for these guys. Uh, keeping an eye on our race, as you can see up on the track map on your screen as well. Got a little bit of traffic ahead of him now uh, as he works his way through the bus stop. I don't think it will impact him too much, but uh, the gap further back to, to our two leaders, second and third that we're watching now, Haber and uh, Bradley Ratu, sitting still at about that half second range and, and the gap actually increasing for Krug Holt, so he's found that uh, that magic setup that's working for him right now. Yeah, he's possibly been the fastest driver out here today. Seemed like James Scott perhaps didn't have a big advantage as Harley Haber comes into the pits. Just about gets it slowed down. So we, we were speaking to James Scott at Brian's Hatch actually uh, last week and he was saying how he was just reacting to everyone else. He was thinking, I will pit one lap later than second place pits. He's got a bit, or um, ERT have a bit more of a gap today, so they could leave it out a couple more laps. Uh, but I would not be at all surprised if they did come in on this time uh, just to cover off any challenge from Harley Haber and uh, Mac One Esports Pink. Brad Lever 2 then. Probably a big question for what he does. Um, of course, he could stay out and have some much fresh tyres to do towards the end of the race, but have a lot of time to gain. So we will uh, see what uh, the 038 car does as well. Uh, so still Haber ahead of Ross. However, Ross is a bit close now, John Ross. Uh, 20, uh, the 143 ERT car, 10 seconds separates those two uh, cars. That will end up being uh, third, uh, sorry, second and fourth positions, uh, we believe. 
was a careful actor about to be overtaken by James McKee out on set. McKee with uh, already taking an extra pit stop, remember? Yeah, McKee doing a really good job, um, both himself and his teammate, Marcus Hollyanchich. Coming on, uh, well, a little further down probably than where they'd want to be. Obviously, we saw them starting uh, in, oh, just on uh, the pole position there. Pole second pole position, I think, believe it was tonight. So they're down a little way from where they want to be down in eighth. But uh, the car looking reasonably good and, and still in a pretty good straight line. Obviously, they have had plenty of issues early on. Obviously, the, the collection with the wall and, uh, and a drive-through penalty very early on the race. But... Uh, they're still fighting hard, which is great to see. Looks like uh, the 088 of Group Gold has also dropped into the lane. You can see that up on the timing board. And uh, hard to believe, we're only a couple of minutes away now from the 3 hour mark, so uh, this race absolutely flying by at this moment. Yeah, it always comes up the end uh, very quickly. It's quite daunting at the start of the race how long there is to go. But uh, this one, the, quick, well, the quickest insurance race of the season of course only two more after this one two of the first three two of the first uh, three rounds endurance meetings and then uh, we've only got two more towards the end of the season i believe bathurst is the uh, end of the uh, of the season by the way um the uh, a little bit of a question on iris actually are there any more competition cautions yet we don't know there's been two already there doesn't have to be another one um in fact yeah there's only been one already but of course uh, also another one to clear up the car so there could be more, or there could not be. We've seen also another couple of cars being stranded out on circuit getting tows. Uh, however, we believe they were unauthorized, hence why there wasn't a caution. Uh, big moments like that in the race, which we can change the uh, strategy quite uh, significantly. It would be great to maybe even have a chat with a couple of the stewards later on in the event. Not quite sure after the race. Of course, any teams watching this, um, particularly if you, if you finish in the higher positions, uh, certainly do have a chat with us after this. We'd uh, really love to know uh, how your uh, how your events progressed because uh, it is quite eye-opening to us. We can't watch every single car at every single point, so we may miss a couple of things. Red Lube 2 coming into the pits then. Uh, the 038 car, EXG Motorsports Red. And he will almost certainly come out in third position fourth position even, depending on whether or not Ryan O'Sullivan comes into the pits. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that and, uh, and see how that unfolds. One little quick thing, we will we'll just update to uh, six, six endurance rounds instead of the Apologies. four. So uh, next time out, uh, actually, as you say, yeah, we go to Summit Point. Uh, next endurance race, uh, really looking forward to that one. We'll be at uh, Jules Villeneuve out at Montreal and off to Barcelona, Imola and finishing as you say at Bathurst which will be a fantastic um, run watching all these new cars going around. Uh, Grug Galt is back in first position at the moment. Um, Bradley Ratu also come through for a stop and on the exit so uh, interesting to see when this unfolds actually right next to Harley Haber there so uh, those guys very very close on track and uh, continuing on this fantastic fight which we've been watching for the last stint. So uh, as the guys tick over three hour mark, we are just short of about 16 laps to go. So a, uh, a very quick run to the line for these guys to close up. And uh, the gap really extended out now to just on 10 seconds. Haber, Ratu behind Ethan Grigolt now. So they've got a lot of work to do. You can see the track conditions up on the side of screen right now, 21 degrees on track, 21 ambient. A uh, little bit of wind, we're nearing 11 o'clock, so almost midnight in Zim at the moment and uh, pretty well ideal conditions for these cars. James McKee seemingly, seemingly coming in for an extra pit stop, come in seven times now. Uh, one of them was uh, a very early pit stop, uh, so you see he's a faster pair, but he's just come into the pits for a one second pit stop. Do we know why that would have been? That seems very strange. Yeah, not too sure on that one. Uh, it'd be interesting to know. Maybe we can get the guys up in the box a little later. We'll keep an eye on that though, because uh, yeah, a little bit, bit of a weird one. Potentially a little bit of a glitch with the uh, with the software there. But we'll uh, keep an eye there. But uh, yeah, all in all, they'll uh, they'll definitely need to, to potentially come down the lane for but one more stop if uh, if they don't have enough. This battle here, Jake Purdy, uh, sorry, James Mackey, still going to two teammates. Uh, so. 
777 and the 940, fifth and sixth position on track, uh, right behind them, running off as well. You see the 026 for ERT, uh, that car having a little bit of trouble on the run through the brakes. That was Jordan Caruso behind the wheel there, so a big slowdown penalty for those guys as a result. But uh, this run here down into turn one for, uh, for Purdy, I think he's going to get a, uh, a move here done on Mackey. Goes to the outside. It's going to be a fantastic solid run. And not actually both drivers having a little bit of trouble, a little bit of brake lock up. You can see some uh, tyre smoke from the Reaper Sim car ahead as it negotiates turn one there. But uh, the two teammates not giving an inch, both working now through turns three. The, uh, the Reaper car going to have to keep an eye on this. Ducks to the inside just to allow this fight to continue on. So smart awareness there. Right up the front though, Harley Haber and Bradley Ratu still locked together. Absolutely nothing between either of these cars in the second position. You can see Haber actually maybe struggling just a touch, getting that car turned in, uh, not wanting to, to co cooperate there and a fair slide for him on the run through the bus stop. Jordan Ross struggling behind these guys, not quite sure why uh, the 143 car is happening quite so slowly, maybe a bit of traffic for him, uh, because he was 10 seconds behind these guys, he's now 15. Here we are though, side by side for second place with two, moving momentarily ahead, however then the pace equalises, such as the pace of the Mac 1 Esports pink car, and he should have the best line into turn one. This could be a long uh, 20 uh, or 13 laps, 15 laps eventually 15 laps uh, for uh, Harley Haber in order to defend this second place but like I said 15 seconds back to Jordan Ross if it was a little bit less if Ross had uh, set a few quicker lap times recently then uh, they might have to think about fourth place however instead they should have a gap as long as they don't go and smash into a wall depending, in, uh, depending into almost every corner right now is Haber yeah, he's really going very defensive and uh, he's not going to want to have to do that for the next 15 laps. It's going to be a long way home for him. You can see the lap times as a result starting to struggle. Last time by for Grigal, 43.5. So uh, he has got the hammer down and really moving forward while these guys are scrapping back in the 45s. Uh, really surprised and, and impressed with how well EXG Motorsports has come on. Obviously a uh, really strong team within the GT uh, GT3, GTE category, but uh, coming on fantastically well now in the V8 supercar. As you see Bradley trying to go a run down the inside, not quite going to get it. Uh, Haber just struggling a little bit for the top pace in that car right now. Nice launch potentially for a T, but he's, is he dropping back a little bit or maybe just easing off the throttle? Now he's going to draw alongside. Has to take the high line a little bit further distance, obviously. However, uh, when he gets back onto the triangle, he'll have a little bit of overspeed. Now, this is almost an identical situation. In fact, the two is actually less ahead than he was one lap ago. Haber gets it stopped. He's a little bit sideways. And he stays ahead again. The two running out of ideas almost. But he's got time still. This is a long way to go in this race. 20 minutes to go or so. Can still get past. He's uh, as close as can be without getting fast. Yeah, both these guys um, really, really fighting to, to keep this second and, and third position alive, and neither one wanting to give an inch uh, here. So keep focus on that. Haber still massively defensive on the run into five, which is what we want to see. And um, doing it, doing it quite fairly, only moving the once under the brakes, which you're allowed to do, and on moving that car all around the area and uh, see him now what the what the exit's like it's quite good off turn uh, turn number six there but Ratu is going to be in a prime position now as you can see him right basically on that gearbox and uh, I think he'll see Haber again go defensive down the inside uh, Ratu is going to have to really start thinking about how he's going to uh, get this out he knows he doesn't really have the braking opportunity down the inside what's he going to be able to do next is he able to get any get into the mind of, uh, of Haber here and, and force this move over. He's a little bit further behind this time coming out of the bus stop. I think that might be better for him because he wants to be able to stay full throttle through NASCAR 3 and 4 and then when he, they get 
off the oval, be able to move alongside. That's almost perfect for him. He's got a nice over speed now, and he's actually further ahead than he's been on the last couple of laps. Now, I mean, we are talking hundreds of a second. It was one one hundredth of a second ahead on the last lap. This time, he's four one hundredths of a second ahead. However, there's uh, just no way there. He gets the cut back. And this is also very close compared to last lap. Haber's going to have to go defensive into the hairpin. It's just no way past. This has actually been the closest that the two has got, part, uh, got coming out of this next corner. And then maybe going around the outside into the kink. And this time, he's being able to move ahead is the two. Around the outside he goes. This is going to be a brave move if he can pull it off. Contact between the two of them and off goes Bradley with two can he get the car slowed down he desperately tries to and he might still be able to pull the move off now down the inside Haber will have the inside for the next corner with two trying absolutely everything he possibly can around the outside in one on inside through two however Harley Haber will just not give in this position and the gap is still a tenth and a half uh, really, neither driver wanted to get in I'm really surprised uh... Radu was able to, to maintain control of that car. I thought he might have um, had, a, had a, a chance to lose it there, but uh, great driving from both of these guys. You can see Haber just goes defensive, swings it back in just a touch under the brakes there to, to hold that position. But uh, these guys are going to be scrapping out this one the entirety of the race. I'm not sure what Radu's going to be able to do here to get a move because we've seen him now go two or three times around the outside into turn one. Saw him earlier on just how good Haber was under brakes, and I think he's going to need to find another option to get that move done. I'm really watching um, the way that both these cars are a little bit traction limited on the exit of turn three, and I think if he can square that corner up, he's got a very good opportunity to get this car set up the inside and then utilize the run through the kink and, and pull the, uh, the nose ahead through turn five, but uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Seemingly, John Ross with serious issues out there because. He's still lapping, very uh, slow out there. A couple of seconds slower than what we'd uh, expect from the uh, 143 car. Uh, so he's not being able to feature in this one. He's 17 seconds behind this time, for well, the first time in a few laps with two. Well, he, he's a, well, a little bit off alongside. Not enough to go for a move. And Haber, every lap which passes, one, he's one lap closer to the checker flag, and two, he knows the strengths and weaknesses of it too, that little bit more. Although, judging by the fact that they were no to tell for the entirety of the last stint as well, he should be uh, pretty knowledgeable already on how to beat his rival. James McKee gets him overtaken by Jordan Caruso at the moment. McKee, remember, with an extra pit stop, maybe with a, a stop-go penalty, I'm not quite sure. He was stationary in the pits for one second, perhaps taking a faster pair. Not quite sure. It's uh, really suffered him. He's already got be, been overtaken by the 940 uh, Blake Perky car of uh, Pursuit Sim Racing, and now he's been overtaken by the ERT 26 car of Jordan Caruso. So, from fighting for fourth place, and he really could have got fourth place if it weren't for that uh, extra trip down the pits, he's down into seventh. And now Adam Briggs, the 72 car uh, for DPR Racing One, right on his tail as well. So. A lot still happening out elsewhere in the top 10. As the two finally got past, he was ahead, I think, going into turn one. Apologies that we're going to have to go back to this back to the game. The two this time, all the way around the outside through turn one. It is finally where Haber's defence of second position comes to an end. It looks like it's going to be the case. The two with the much better line into turn three. A tap, though, from Haber. The two hanging on. And finally, he has been able to move up. It, that's not the battle over. Haber's got good straight line speed. He'll be a threat going into the bus stop. He might even be a threat going into the second horseshoe. However, it was uh, a lot of effort went into that one, Daniel. And finally, he yielded the reward. Yeah, that was a big run there for Radu to get that move done. A uh, little bit of a, uh, a cheeky tap there from Haber, just letting him know that he's not going to give in as easy as see it, drop, the car dropped back just a touch. A little bit of a, uh, a draft coming from a lap down car behind these guys, which potentially gonna throw uh, Haber off just a fraction, but let's keep an eye on this. Haber's now had a stint and a half where he's been under a lot of pressure uh, from this car. 
really interested to see what he can do now. Obviously, going to turn his attention from defence to attack. And uh, being a, a, a real-world driver, we know that he will push this car as far as he can to get the most out of it. So um, right now is a really good opportunity just to see again just how quick that car is in the straight line, which we saw early on. And uh, I think he will be really quick to try and get this move done and dusted and get back up the front. Haber okay, with a warning for that defence on the last lap. I imagine that's been pushed a little bit further back in his mind because he's moved back ahead now into second place. Can he get it done on the brakes? Oh, he tries to go around the outside. I don't think he's got the grip, however. Nah, that's to stay behind. However, we, as we were saying before, you know, that's, he's got a lot of straight line speed. When you got 5Ks and now splashing the lights as well, trying to put off his rival, trying every trick in the book, is Harley Haber. 17 seconds behind first place, 17 seconds ahead of fourth place. Once again, flashing the lights is, uh, is Haber. You can see this one perhaps edging away from him. One mistake, if he loses the draft, then he is in massive trouble. I mean, a podium result would still be uh, a good result for Mac1 Esports Pink. I believe their best result of the season, of course, finished uh, outside the top 10 at Spa. I think they had the best round at Grand Hatch either. This would be a, a good point, Saul. However, after hanging on to second place for so long, really would like to take it back. James McKee, by the way, has taken back sixth place off Jordan Caruso. Adam Griggs right on the tail as well. And uh, Sean Thompson uh, about 10 seconds behind trying to catch up to these guys. Yeah, solid run for these guys. Still fighting down uh, sixth and seventh position. A little bit of lap traffic starting to come in their way. One of the middle figure cars. Uh, just ahead of them, that's the 54, uh, driven by, which we'll grab a number for, name for that in a moment, I think it might be Matt Stratford there. So um, that car just starting to impede just a fraction, and uh, that's really starting to close up this group as well. So we've got three cars in the line here, uh, the Pursuit Sim Racing 1, Evolution Racing at number 26 there in the hands of Caruso, right behind Adam Briggs. Uh, it's coming along for DPR. I think he's going to get a really solid run here. You can see him on the inside, not quite able to get a move down into the bus stop. Potential off track for both Caruso and Briggs there. So Caruso ahead of Briggs. I think, well, so was that Briggs down the inside then of Caruso and, and, and couldn't get it stopped? Cutting the grass and uh, apologies uh, then. Uh, Griggs on the outside and yeah he could not get that one so I mean too wide into that corner it's not the wise thing anyway and uh, good driving there for Cruz I think he just opened up the bus stop a little bit just so that he uh, minimized the the risk of being flattered into good fortune for James McKee then he was falling down the order back up into sixth place and with a little bit of a gap now and also catching up to Blake Purdy as well um Damien Johnston, this is a tight battle. Uh, Ger uh, Gerard, who's uh, off at that corner, about uh, probably about 15 laps ago now. But he's still ahead of Damien Johnston and Bruce Keeley as well. Keeley, I think, was stationary earlier on in this race. Uh, so all these guys having uh, their own uh, misdemeanors. Gerhardt's on that last lap was two seconds slower than Damien Johnston. Yeah, great to see these guys um, out on track. A little further down, probably might be where they want to be. Everyone wants to be up towards the sharp end, but um, really solid battling between these guys. Uh, middle figure, JRM and Ensign. You can just see Damien just struggling a little bit with mid-corner grip. That card moving just a fraction on him, but he's going to get a great draft here. Uh, and those two actually on the run through the bus stop were able to open up a little bit more of an advantage over Bruce Keeley. So um, Johnston here, trying to look around the outside i think he'll do similar to what you said earlier mate and going out just after they get around nascar four which is done and i think he'll be able to get that car just up enough into the braking zone just catch a glimpse of that car there and, and nothing much between them so uh fighting on battle up towards the front though second and third still going at it two tenths of a second between those guys we'll switch back up here uh, harley haber brad ratu uh, still fighting, Haber throwing everything at it and then some to try and get this move done. You can see him just working the, uh, the exit curb, turn five there, and 
will be in a great draft now. Yeah, it's surprising actually the straight line speed there of uh, of Johnston, not uh, really having the straight line speed to draw alongside. But uh, yeah, back with this battle for second place. Haber desperately wants to have track position. He wanted track position earlier on, remember when he was leading. Made a big effort to uh, take the lead despite uh, probably having the pace to just stick in the slipstream of the uh, 088 ERT car. Instead, he uh, wanted uh, yeah, track position, like I say. Didn't uh, quite work for him because under the uh, after the pit, uh, pit stops, the 88 car managing to have a much shorter pit stop, breaking the draft and pulling away ever since. However, these two have still been locked together. Great straight line speed for Haber, dipping into the slipstream. However, actually neutralizing a bit, and this will not be nearly good enough run to go around the outside into turn one. However, he's still in range. He, he, as long as he knows how to get past, it's okay. It's not when he gets it done, it's, uh, it's if he gets it done. But uh, it's, it's certainly not, not easy. It's surprising how difficult it is to overtake around a slipstream circuit like this, but that turn one, it's so easy to defend the inside line and it's so difficult to go around the outside. Oh well, yeah, definitely. I think um, he'll consider a few options. He knows how to go defensive around here. We've seen it for that last in the half, but getting this move done, going to be interesting. i got a feeling, watching the way he's placing that car into turn one, I think he's trying to move from going from the outside to cut the nose back in and try and fire it up the inside, which will be really interesting to see whether he's able to do that. Uh, I think Radu might be a little bit awake to it. He breaks just a fraction early, which uh, which ultimately forces uh, Haber to stay out wide, but I wouldn't be surprised if he considers a move similar to that uh, in a couple of laps time. He could move alongside going into the bus stop, but it would be a bold move. That's got good straight line speed there. So, certainly those older tyres not affecting him too much when we're two lap older tyres for Harley Haber. They should both be absolutely fine on fuel, especially seeing that they've been in one another slipstream quite a bit. So saving a little bit of fuel for themselves. Jordan Ross now 18 seconds behind. Ross's uh, pace uh, improving a little bit, but uh, I, I don't know if there was an issue for Ross earlier on. But I mean, he was 10 seconds behind these guys, and now he's 16. And uh, he's usually uh, an equal for them. So strange that he did uh, drop back quite as much as he did in just a handful of laps. Very deep on the brakes for Haber. He was almost alongside on the last lap, and he's nearly alongside on this lap as well, but no, still not there. Backmark is keeping up with them right now. Uh, that is uh, Cameron uh, Stubber, I believe, just behind. He's uh, yeah, comfortably keeping up with these guys in the uh, 45 machine. A uh, 46.5 on that last lap was one and a half tenths faster. He, is, he, uh, he himself, actually, is trying to catch up to uh, Jacob Knight who is 13 and a half seconds up the road. Uh, at the moment though, Knight lapping very similar. So it shows how you know competitive the midfield is when we got this battle for second and third and uh, they're barely faster than the lap drivers that they're lapping. Yeah, definitely. They're uh, coming on really, really strong. I think for, the, for a lot of the guys being able to keep up with this and uh, utilize that as a good benchmark, really working well. We did just have to our first uh, incident limit drive through being awarded to car 22 of John Latham uh, for Middle Finger Racing. So uh, they've just exceeded the 35 limit mark, and uh, as a result, they will get their first drive through of the night. That's done in 25th place. Is there any uh, consolation for them? Um, Apologies, was it 25th? Uh, yeah, so, sorry. Um, yeah, they'll only lose one place. So. Uh, Good times against a drive through penalty, most likely. Um, we'll uh, update in a second uh, if anyone's close. Because 30 instants, you get a drive through penalty. A uh, new feature from iRacing, and it is certainly very useful, undoubtedly. So, thanks a lot for them for implementing that. And it's good thinking from the stewards as well to add it to this season. Well, this is a little bit closer, is it? Or is it literally a carbon copy of what we saw last lap? I mean, this could just be a replay, but we you know. Because the same well, every single lap. Yeah, it's getting very, very close. I think Haber's just getting that nose in. Oh, big slide there for Radu, and that's actually going to open this door for Haber to get up the inside. So we've watched the onboard. I'm surprised Haber couldn't square that off enough and uh, 
push the car forward there. So uh, I think he's starting to really get in the mind here of Radu. And a couple of little errors starting to creep in. So uh, that one, just a little bit extra traction, which ultimately is uh, kicked that car sideways. So going to be hard to, to not only regroup, but also try and keep that car positioned exactly where he needs to to get this uh, car home in second place, which would be a fantastic result for them. We've still got five laps left to go on the board. Uh, just for comparison, obviously we've got a quite big gap between these two and our race leader, leader on the banking of turn three, while our uh, second and third position just exiting NASCAR 2 on the run to bus stop. So uh, by comparison, a long way between both these cars and uh, this fight, absolutely fantastic right now. So I need four laps to go then by the conclusion of this one. Nice run for Haber, maybe. Supports of a second behind. I think he's going to have to duck out of this one before the oval is complete. Actually, I think he just lifted out of that one. Now puts his foot down. No, he lifts off again. Huh. That was only a lift. Unless maybe my voice clouded that one. Not quite sure if the viewers could hear. I don't know if you could hear. Daniel there. Oh, but this time he's uh, really late on the brakes. So he's got later and later on the brakes. So he's sideways. Oh, and there's a car spanner just ahead of them. And that was contact, I think, for Bradley Ritu. I certainly saw some contact. Is there any damage on that car? Yeah, I'm not sure if there's Connor. That was the uh, the 54 there, which was the Stealth Sim Force uh, Mustang against the wall. I think they've been able to back that car out, which they have which will keep going, so no need for a safety car with four laps to go. And uh, that was potentially the little shake-up that uh, might have almost saved there, but uh, Haber closes back in as a result. I don't think there's any damage looking at the car right although very hard to see with it being a uh, black livery on the EXG machine. So uh, keep an eye there. Further back, Briggs and Caruso scrapping over seventh position at the moment. Also got a little bit further up the field as well. Blake Purdy and Jordan Ross also getting involved for fourth position as well. So some really solid battles starting to come up in this final few laps. This is a bit strange for Blake Purdy and the Pursuit Sim Racing 3 because they overtook James McKee earlier on in the stint back when McKee was falling backwards down the order. Um, but now McKee, really good tie life it seems in that car. I don't know because uh, Tali Antic was saying after Spa how they uh, maybe didn't quite get the sets up right in terms of the tyre degradation on that occasion, how the tyres were degging too much. Today, or at least in this last stint, it seems like it's been the complete opposite. It seems like the pace has really come to them late on in the stint. And now he's got a fantastic chance at overtaking Purdy on that last lap was 7 tenths faster. Caruso and Briggs also fighting one another. We've got Vaughan getting past King. That is for 11th place. So Evolution Racing Team 27 gets past Zuber Racing 209. And we've also got Gerhardt and um, the Synergy Sim Racing Team as well of uh, Bruce Keeley. That's the battle for 21st. So plenty going on up and down the order. Still a few more duels uh, in order to, uh, to uh, resolve. But uh, yeah, this is how Vaughan did it. was quite a simple move then for Stuart Vaughan uh, to move up into 11th place. A little bit of an object for David Baxter, by the way. But I uh, don't think it's cost him too much. Uh, John Latham, I don't think has served his drive through penalty yet. So, uh am out on that. But uh, certainly, most of our attention has got to be paid now to these top two. Well, also, a, uh, a spin for Jordan Ross as well. So, we're just caught that on the replay. Thank you, Scott, for going back there. So uh, he's been able to get that car turned around and back underway, although, yeah, back underway. So that's a, uh, a good run for them. We've still got this battle, fifth and sixth, between the teammates, the Pursuit Racing, uh, number one and number three, still going at it. And uh, these guys working around NASCAR to a little bit of luck traffic ahead, which I don't think is going to cause an issue. That was the, the Mustang there of... Uh, Andrew Johnson just getting out of the way, so uh, allows that fight to continue on. Up towards the front, though, our uh, race leaders, they dive down into one, fighting still Haber. 
40 might have got there six hundredths of a second, absolutely nothing between it, and uh, has to fall back in line. Unfortunately, we've still got the, uh, the battle there with DPR and ERT in seventh and eighth going at it, and uh, Zuba Racing and, and ERT Zero Two Seven getting into it as well. So it's four really solid battles just uh, around our top 10 at the moment. Yep, top 17 still on the, uh, sorry, not even top 17, top, uh, only top 13 on the lead lap. Terrific pace being shown by these uh, front runs, yet they are still very close at this uh, latter point. With two, well, he's been able to fend off everything from Haber. I, Haber was lifting off though early on down the pit straight. I don't know if he really wanted to get past, but now he's got to get past. This is lap 112. He's got one more chance in turn one, which is the corner where he's got closest to his rival. Also the bus stop as well. You see him really close in here two tenths of a second the gap he can draw alongside if he so wishes however he might be able to say that will leave him vulnerable down the next straight he has a glance but stays behind so this is what second place could come down to then it's with two versus Haber it's EXG Motorsports Red versus Mac one Esports Pink and let's see if Haber has got anything up his sleeve. Will he lift off the Thotsall this time? He does for a moment here. Now, this is where he needs some big overspeed. He'll catch, catch, catch. Apron not allowed to be used by these drivers. And Haber still cannot get properly alongside. Almost squeezed into the wall. And this is actually further back than he's been on the few previous laps. So he wasn't waiting for something. Unless he wants to run to the line. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see. He's putting a lot of pressure on himself to nail the bus stop chicane. Safe to say that. Yeah, really tough, difficult move there. I thought he might have been a little closer along. Uh, Ratu struggling a little bit on exit as he uh, works his way down through the infield at the moment, but just enough to keep that car ahead. Ooh, Keeping an eye to our race leader is just around NASCAR 2 and 3. We've still got a couple of positional changes also going on a little further down, but uh, this battle for second and third, absolutely fantastic. Mackie and his teammate still scrapping over fifth and sixth position, so uh, keeping an eye on those cars. I don't think we'll see uh, Mackie get through it. Race leader, though, working his way through the bus stop for the final time. A little bit of traffic ahead of him, but uh, you know, very, very dominant couple of stints here for Ethan Grugal in the uh, 088 Evolution Racing Team car. It's been another perfect race from the 88 ERT car. It's going to be three from three for James Scott. It's going to be a first race win of the season for Ethan Griggolt. They win at Daytona. Dominant performance once again. 25 seconds clear. Who is going to get second place though? With two versus Haber. Has Haber nailed this one to get the run to the line? Does he have enough pace? We know that he's got the fastest car out on circuit and he is drawing alongside right at the end. And there is nothing that Bradley with two can do. Oh, contact oh. between the two of them. They both go into the wall. Who is going to cross the line first though? It is with two who gets second place for EXG Motorsports Red. It's Haber for Mac 1 Esports Pink. However, I do think there's going to have to be some analysis after the race as to whose fault that was for the contact. Jordan Ross for Evolution Racing Team 143, I think, will finish in fourth place. Still going on, though, between Purdy and Mackey for uh, Pursuit Sim Racing. It should be the 940 car beating the Chipport 7 car. However, they are going to the run to the line. The two teammates almost drawing alongside. It still will hang on to that position. Will Blake Purdy, a 940 car, get that position? And in the end, Adam Briggs quite comfortably beat Jordan Caruso. Uh, any other factors? Henry King versus... Henry King's got back past Stuart Vaughan then, right at the end of this race. Not quite sure what happened there because it seemed like Vaughan had much better pace. He is catching at the end here, down to three tenths of a second. It will be close. It won't be close enough though. Henry King for Zuba Racing 209 beats Evolution Racing Team 27 to that 11th place. Kenneth Black to the last driver. He will cross the line. Well, what a finish that was, Daniel. After all of that, and it comes down to the run to the line for second position. Um, I, I, I think there might be some choice words as well between the drivers after that. 
Yeah, that's a, uh, a really interesting one. I would not want to be in race control having to, to figure that one out. Um, interesting to see the move that, that Haber made. He'd been really setting that up for quite a while, and, and we both completely missed it. Uh, we were thinking he was going for the run down the inside line, but um, he used that slipstream advantage quite well, and I reckon, it, all going well, he would have had that spot in the bag. So um, a little bit interesting, a little bit um, cheeky from Ratu to, to try and close the door as much as he did, but um, yeah, that will certainly come down to a race control decision on that one, and, and if anything, I think uh, Ratu probably going to be in the bad books for that move. Yeah, we'll try to get a replay um of it uh in a moment maybe from the drop of view or something but first up i think we'll go through the race results and winning out then for the third time this season for the second time at least in the team's championship uh james scott uh winning out once again three out of three he's the man's beat it's another race win apparently six race wins in a season if you can count back to last season as well evolution racing team 88 then win out 27 seconds ahead of exg Motorsports Red, um, who were ahead of Mac White Sports Pink. Uh, Asterix next to that one, I think. Though. Evolution Racing Team 143, uh, finishing in fourth place. Then Pursuit Sim Racing 3 in fifth, uh, just about beating their teammates, Pursuit Sim Racing 1. There's DPR Racing 1, Evolution Racing Team 26, KRF, the driver's seat. Nice job from them in ninth. And uh, Premier Racing Team, the car number one. Very consistent out there. They were the static block whilst everything else is going along around them uh, and stayed in 10th place for pretty much the whole race. Uh, there they are. Uh, Zuba Racing Team 209 beats Evolution Racing Team uh, 027. We think that was a move on the last lap of the race. Back one Esports Green finishing in 13th place. Then the driver, all of the teams, one lap down. Were Pursuit Sim Racing 2, Back one Esports Yellow, Tanked SRT T1, EXG Motorsports Black, EXG Motorsports White, Middle Finger Racing, Triple Five, GRM Enduro, Synergy Sim Racing, Middle Finger Racing 66, PRA 029, Middle Finger Racing number 17, Reaper Sim Racing, uh, Spare Repairs RRT 31, and then two laps down was Pulse Racing Team Blue, SSF Penwright Racing 747, you led at one point, I believe, uh, Middle Finger Racing 019, PRA is, uh, 37, the three laps down was Riot Sim Racing, RRT Boa Pez 231, Middle Finger Racing 54, uh, Tanked SRT T2, Team Hyperdrive 919, Fishy Motorsports were five laps down, uh, so too were SSF Penwright Racing 54, and then the proper retirees were KRF Motorsports, RRT Boa Pez 299, High Torque Racing, Team 88 and uh, BRM Sim Sport Homie, who I don't think took the start either. Although they did set a qualifying time, so not quite sure what happened to that. Um, so, uh, yeah, could, uh, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll jump straight in, this, I think, um, because uh, I'd like to have a chat with the drivers. So, I think first up, we will straight away get a uh, quite a, quite a, a normal. Um, uh, the, or the sensible decision as to who to interview. It's our race winners, Ethan Grigg Galt and James Scott. Um, first up, James, um, pretty incredible once again. That's three out of three this season. Um, quite incredible. Yeah, definitely. Um, first of all, congratulations to Ethan as well. He, it's the best I've seen him go. He went really well. Um, but yeah, it was far from easy, obviously, um, getting a drive through early. Um, wasn't the ideal way to get off to start to start the race there. Um, so sorry to um, Pursuit Sim Racing for that. Um, but yeah, that was definitely good to th make it three from three. Yeah, definitely. And a uh, quick word for, uh, or, 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 or a long word, Ethan, about your strategy in that last couple of stints. It was really interesting how um, you seem to be saving fuel in that penultimate stint and it seemed to work really well for you. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't too bad. We um. We come into the, to this race with a bit more pace than we expected, race pace-wise. Uh, our, our quality was about where we expected. But yeah, in those last few stints, uh, Scotty just sat behind the, the car in front and saved a bit of fuel, and which allowed us to um, uh, jump out just in front of the other cars. And uh, pretty much just for my stints, I, I was going flat out. There was no real fuel saving for me. I think we were just a bit better on fuel than everyone else, and, and the setup was quite good and very drivable. So yeah, it was, it was just really good in the end. 
and how were the conditions out there on the circuit? Did the conditions change at all? Did the was there any kind of changes in the uh, in the track temperature or the, uh, the the grip you thought that was out there? Yeah, look, I'm not sure if the track temperature changed too much, but um, the Daytona was definitely ridiculously hard on tyres. I, I think everyone was getting about two seconds worth of drop off from fastest to slowest lap, which is um, pretty damn insane. And 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 you end up driving sideways off every every single corner, just fighting for traction. But um, yeah, I found it, it was a bit quicker in the early stints, and, and, and as it went on, the track rubbed up a bit. It actually got a bit slower. But then the low fuel for the last stint, the car was on fire, and we managed to pull a huge gap. Absolutely. And uh, James, next up, Summit Points. I mean, how much practice have you got around that circuit? It's not usually a circuit that we visit too much, but um, yeah, how, how do you feel about that one? Uh, well, yeah, easy answer to that one. I've done zero practice. I don't even know if I own the track, to be honest. Um, oh, it's free. So, so that's oh, a benefit. Well, there you go. Well, I've done zero laps, so that will definitely be... I've seen... A couple of videos, uh, like live streams around there, so I got an idea of where the track goes. Just uh, never turned the lap, so that would definitely be interesting. Well, I'm sure you'll still do very well, and uh, best of luck to make it four out of four next week. Uh, congratulations to uh, both of you. Is there anyone you'd like to thank? Oh, yeah, I'd just like to thank uh, everyone over at Logitech G, uh, West End Master, and Paramount, Izuzu for all their support. It's, it's really Awesome. Thank you very much, guys, for having a chat with us. And um, congratulations on your second team victory of the season. Thanks, boys. Thank you. So, Much more about next, so uh, yeah, next up, uh, we'll have a chat, I believe, with the EXG guys. And uh, Daniel will uh, have a chat with them. Yeah, g'day, fellas. Uh, welcome to the commentary box. Uh, fantastic run for you guys through the course of the, the race. You guys finished up in a fantastic position going on. Um, we won't touch on on the final finishing position yet, but how was everything in, in the car for you guys? Like, the pace looked fantastic, and as we say, you guys are coming on very, very strong within the uh, the extra. What were you, Corey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that, um, yeah, thanks, boys. Uh, that race was great. Uh, it was all about um, driving fast as you could uh, to a number. And I think in my one of my stints there, I managed that perfectly. I nestled myself right in uh, behind James and uh, Forzan and uh, managed to save a heap of fuel whilst maintaining the pace about half a second off them at all times. So I, I would call that race a success. Uh, you know, we nailed all our pit stops. We made minimal errors. Uh, and yeah, as you say, we're, we're coming on really strong. Looking forward to the rest of the year. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of your final pit stop there, uh, watching you come in the lane just ready for, for the change when, when Forzan dropped in as well, I almost thought you might have caught being caught for speeding. The car looked a little bit squirrely under brakes. Was it just enough in it to, to prevent that at all? Uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask Brad. Oh, was this the, yeah, the coming into the pits the final time? Yeah, just for the final time, it looked like the, the caught the brakes. We saw a little bit of a lock up and, and the car a little bit loose on entry there. Uh, I think we might have just got it in just in time. Was that right? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure. I actually have to have a look. I wasn't too keen enough to look away from what I was doing, but uh, definitely the car was a little bit unstable on the entry. Um, smashed that button, the pit speed uh, limiter button, as soon as I hit the brake. So as um, soon as I hit that throttle, um, you know, it would go straight to the limiter. So it's a very sketchy entry, though. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And uh, look, turning to you, Brad, final, final couple of stints out there. Found yourself in a fantastic scrap with Harley Haber to finish out the race. Um, you guys didn't seem to be that far away. Obviously, we, we kept a really good eye on it because the battle was absolutely intense. But how was how was your thoughts out there? You guys looked to be giving a fair amount of room uh, between each other. How did you find it first from, from an attack perspective and then moving into a defence? Um, the attack, well, yeah, um, <laughs> we won't talk on that too much. Uh, the defense was pretty good. Um, I was, actually, I was pretty comfortable uh, being in front. I wasn't expecting to be as comfortable as I was um, being in front, but I was uh, feeling pretty good about it, um, just keeping the car to the inside of the corners. Um, Corey did a really good job with this setup, actually. I didn't really touch this car at all this week. Um, fortunately, I had to go away for work, so the car work was all Corey this week. Um, the car was great. Um, you know, I didn't really have any issues um, 
into the corners, mid corner, anything like that. The car was really, really good. As long as I looked after it, it looked after me. So it made the attacking and defending really good. Uh, I guess we've got to kind of ask the final question uh, and get, get your take on it. Uh, the, the run across the line, um, obviously we saw a bit of a coming together with both yourself and Harley. Uh, how, give, us, give us your perspective on, on how that all unfolded. Well, um, I didn't get a good run through bus stop. Um, I thought I could, I'd be able to move the brake bars for a little bit and maybe brake a little bit later. Didn't quite work like that. As um, soon as I did it and then realised I stuffed that up, um, I knew uh, Harley would have a run on me uh, coming up the uh, front straight. So we moved up the top of the track. Um, there's a line or there's a groove in the road and I sort of kept that in the centre of my car. Um, I started following that around the corner. Actually, I don't even think we made it to the corner yet. And uh, Harley had turned down uh, on the front of my car, and all of a sudden he's just sideways in front of me. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going in a straight line, but he's not quite. So, yeah, I I, I want to chime in as a spotter here and say that um, it it was unfortunate, but I was I was calling black line, black line, black line. So I told him to follow the black line, and uh, yeah, we followed the black line, and uh, the other car didn't, unfortunately. Yeah, well, we're not going to get in involved in the politics on that. I think we'll leave that to uh, to race control. But um, until until decision com completed and, and pending off from from their end, it was a, a fantastic run from you guys. And um, obviously, coming from the GT background, which XG has been been really solid in in quite a few championships, moving onto the VH, you guys are continuing on a fantastic foot. So before we let you go and uh, enjoy second position, is there anything anyone you'd like to give a shout out and a thanks to for helping you guys along the way? Uh, I'd love to give a shout out, first of all, the team. Uh, they did a really, really good job actually throughout the week to get the car sorted, especially Corey. Like I said, I didn't touch this car at all. Um, he did a phenomenal job uh, with the car this week. Um, obviously, our sponsors, Nat, Rad, Games Apparel, uh, Quantum Energy, and just mainly the boys. And the sponsors are really, really good to us. I love their support. Fantastic, guys. Well, again, congratulations. And uh, certainly we look forward to catching you both out on track uh, next week at Sonoma. Can't uh, wait. Yep, looking forward there. to it, boys. Oh, summit Point. Sorry, Summit Point. Summit Point? Oh, well, then better. it's going to be there. <laughs> Let me think of uh, no. Looking forward to it, boys. Uh, wait to catch you next week. Cheers, guys. Catch you then. See you. So I think next up, uh, we will have a chat with one of the drivers who finished in third place. It's uh, it's Harley Haber. Um, Harley, um, congratulations out there, podium. Uh, we'll talk about the end of the race soon, but let's talk about the start. That was uh, a tricky launch off the line. You seem to be you seem to drop out of the top ten almost instantly. Uh, yeah, mate. Uh, Forza actually started the car, not me. But, oh, okay. uh, look, it is a bit tricky, I, I obviously, with the banking blame. and stuff. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. You guys do a great job, and obviously there's a lot of info to take in. But uh, obviously, yeah, with the banking, it's quite difficult to get a good launch. But nonetheless, Falls have done a great job, obviously, to get the car back up to the front and uh, and keep us in contention after after that uh, first stint incident. But, um, yeah, no, still a good result. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what's your strategy in terms of the um, in terms of the fuel out there? Because throughout the race, it was quite a comfortable... Um, number of stops. I think it was a comfortable five stop for for everyone out there. Some drivers went for you know really long stints and then like a short final stint. Some guys kind of evened out the stints. What was your thinking in terms of that? In terms of, if I'm completely honest, I don't I don't work out the strategy. Uh, engineer Chris Radisich works everything out, and he kind of sits by and just tells us when to pit, when to stop, how much fuel, all that kind of stuff. So uh, here's the brains behind all that. I just drive the car. Although it seemed like we pretty much kept on par with what the other guys were doing in, in obviously retrospect because Spa we did fall a little bit out of sync uh, and this race we wanted to make sure that with the draft and everything that we we're still going to be there or thereabouts with uh, with obviously the pace of the other guys that um, yeah we'd be up the front and in the toe. So that was kind of the whole strategy was based off being there at the end. And then in that last stint um, you had some pretty good battles uh, with the uh with the exg guys i mean I, I believe you were running in in second place on on the most parts um some of your some of the defense was uh it was pretty good it, it was enthralling for us to watch 
Yeah, of course. Uh, obviously, for the last, I think, 10, 10 or so laps, that uh, we, we had a very good battle between myself and Brad. And obviously, if you jump on that side of the fence, you know, they'll stick up for themselves. And obviously, our side of the fence will stick up for us. So, uh, at the end of the day, it's up to the Shields to make a decision. And it is what it is. But um, I'm not going to be disappointed with a third place, that's for sure. Absolutely not. Um, and in terms of the uh, the future team races, would you say that you kind of prefer these team races? or? Would you say you're looking forward to getting back to a couple of the uh, the individual events coming up in the next few weeks? Oh, it's hard to say. I don't think I really have a preference whether it's team or single. I think if I'm, oh, I think the majority will prefer single races, but we have to have the enduros in there. It just it changes things up. It spices up the championship. You know, it's a bit more realistic to what what, uh, what goes on in real life and stuff. So I think the enduros are definitely an important segment of our calendar. But uh, yeah, I think me personally, I, I, I'd probably prefer the single races. So I'm looking looking forward to that. Awesome. Well, thanks for having a chat with us, Harley. And um, before we let you go, is there any shout outs you'd like to give to anyone? Yeah, of course. Obviously, Mac One and, and all of the sponsors that, uh, that back us as a team. And, you know, they cover all the entry fees and all of the testing and everything that we do. And, and obviously, Chris Radisic, he works so hard. Like, he puts in so many hours on, on sitting there with me and running through the car and testing. And, and we have a, you know, really strict testing program that we run by. And we do that every round to ensure that, obviously, we're at the front. So, uh, and then, obviously, Mark Samuel, for, for he's, he's a real team leader, that guy, mate. He can, he can definitely run a team. And, and obviously everybody else that's within the team, they're always so congratulatory and and uh, full of thanks for everything. They're so appreciative. So, and uh, it's a great, great bunch of guys in the team. Very happy to be here. And uh, yeah, couldn't thank them all enough. Well, thanks for having a chat with us, Harley. And best of luck for Summit Points next week. Thanks, guys. You did a great job. So I think we are going to have uh, one more interview. Of course, anyone who wants to watch these interview interviews back uh, should be available on the uh, Facebook page for the AOSC uh, Super Series. And um, yeah, so you can watch them back all very comfortably. Uh, so yeah, Daniel, who are we going to have a chat with last? Yeah, I think the uh, the last one we've got is Jamie McKnight, who should be coming up as our yeah, safe driver for the night. We'll uh, get him up here in just... G'day Jamie, how are you mate? Congratulations uh, on uh, the run out there. Good, thank you good guys. Run for yourself. It was actually an excellent run. We had a um, couple of small dramas at the end. Uh, the car wouldn't stop filling up so it filled the full which really cost us because that was about five seconds we lost there but um, all in all we had a you know, great run through the field a couple of times. Real good battles with uh, you know the KRF guys, Rob and um, Sean who are good friends of mine. Had a you know great car underneath us. The team set was brilliant, and uh, an awesome result from the team with Ethan and James winning, uh, and Jordan up there as well in uh, fourth with Kyle. So we were super super happy, and uh, our young guy Jordan and um, welcome back uh, to Ryan as well. They were in eighth place as well. So we've had a we've had a great night. Yeah, it's been a fantastic run for uh, for the boys at ART and uh, for yourself. I mean, the second uh, Safe Driver Award out there in as many enduros. It's uh, starting to become a bit of a habit for you, mate. Four to go in the championship. Can you take uh, all? Look, mate. I look to uh, Ross Rizzo for inspiration. He was formerly the safest driver in the league, and um, you know I've admired him. And I thought this year it's going to be me. We're going to keep it clean, and we're going to take the safest driver award because I'll never be the fastest, but I can be the safest. Yeah, definitely, mate. Well, no, look, it was a fantastic show, but um, yourself and, and Stuart put on a fantastic run uh, out there. Probably not the finishing result you guys would have ideally liked. I know you were sitting up inside that top 10 uh, all night, but uh, for yourself, mate, a uh, congr fantastic job and uh, same to same to. Yeah, thank you, and thank you for the broadcast, guys. Um, Sam, Scotty, good job, boys. Thanks, Dan. Cheers, mate. And that was Jamie McKnight, our Safe Driver Award winner uh, for the Endurance Race tonight. So two Endurance uh, Safe Driver Awards for him. So uh, great results there. But uh, Sam, fantastic race we saw tonight. Uh, race got well and truly done uh, inside the uh, the four-hour time limit that we, we normally see for the 650 Enduro events here on AOSC. But uh, plenty of excitement and racing all up and down throughout the field. Yeah, absolutely. It was a brilliant endurance round of the season, uh, possibly best round of the season. And I'm sure there's going to be many more terrific rounds as well. But once again, a perfect result for Evolution Racing Team 88. They certainly are the team to beat. Quick word, Daniel, on uh, on the next round of the championship, Summit Points. Um, mentioned it a little bit earlier on, but of course, 
uh, one of the original tracks on iRacing and a very tight twisted circuit. We saw at Brands Hatch, it was tough to overtake. Summit Point, I think it's going to be quite a similar event. Yeah, I think uh, Summit Point's going to really provide an interesting um, run out there tonight. The The circuit itself lends itself to a lot of single file racing. Obviously, you've got the big run up the hill um, and some, some quite twisty areas for these cars to get through. So suspension is going to be a really key setup uh, on them. I think we'll see a lot of guys utilizing a fair amount of wing um, to get the most out of these cars. But uh, all in all, for what we'll, we've seen so far uh, throughout the first three races of the season, I expect we're going to see as not uh, as much, if not better, um, racing around that circuit. Yeah, it should be terrific. Certainly do catch it uh, next week at uh, 10.30 GMT on the iRacing eSports Network once again. Of course, uh, if you'd like this video, please leave a like on it and also subscribe to the iRacing eSports Network because there's plenty of other similar events, other uh, supercars action, loads of series um, on, uh, on the iRacing eSports Network. So certainly do check them out. And of course, there's Porsche racing or championship racing NASCAR. Absolutely everything you could ever want. Uh, by the way, just a little bit of an update coming in uh, late on uh, today as to that uh, incident uh, between second and third positions, uh, EXG Motorsports Red and Mac 1 Esports Pink. Uh, EXG uh, crossed the line ahead of Mac 1 Esports Pink. However, that has been changed. So Mac 1 Esports Pink finish in second position. EXG Motorsports Red will finish in third position. So well done to the stewards for making a quick call with that and we can announce that to you now. So top three from today, Evolution Racing Team 88, Mac 1 Esports Pink and EXG Motorsports Red. That is your final order. Um, so yeah, do subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network and uh, if you wouldn't mind, please check out Apex Racing TV because uh, we've got plenty of other uh, series on that as well. Very, very uh, similar commentaries to this. But for now, from me, from Daniel and from Scott, we'll say goodbye and we'll see you next time.